podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks uh, on Saturday, June 25th, 2022, episode 1905. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Cisco Meraki. With employees working in different locations, providing a unified work experience seems as easy as herding cats. How do you rein in so many moving parts? Well, the Meraki Cloud Managed Network. Learn how your organization can make hybrid work work. Visit meraki.cisco.com slash twit. And by Acronis. Keep your digital world safe from all threats with the only cyber protection solution that delivers a unique integration of data protection and cybersecurity in one. Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, formerly Acronis True Image. Go to go.acronis.com slash tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, and everything else with a chip in it. Mr. Micah Sargent is also here. Hello, Micah. Hello, Leo Laporte. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, good to see you, too. <sighs> that means I don't have to answer all these questions on my own. Thank <laughs> goodness. Phone number, if you want to talk high tech with me and us, with, with us, is 8888-ASK-LEO, 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S., or Canada. Now, if you're not in Canada or the United Stereos, then you should. <laughs> you should. Well, there's left and there's right, right? So yeah. that gives you know, full Stereos. sound, full Got spectrum, it. full Got spectrum it. sound. Uh, <laughs> you can use Skype out or something like that to call 8888 Ask Leo. Mm. Italian SA, the Italian. Uh, Something. Securidado de agencia. That's it. Yeah. Uh, their their privacy uh, people, SA, have banned Google Analytics. Do you know what Google Analytics are? We use it on our website. Uh, I use it. Uh, you know, I've been using it for years. Google Analytics is a little a bit of JavaScript that you put on your website that counts view visitors. Mm -hmm. In the old days, you're probably too young to remember this. Websites. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe you were around. I don't know. Websites used to have a counter. Yes, remember? you'd have a little counter on you, your, on your GeoCity site. I had mine on my Zenga. On your Zenga, uh, it would have a little counter that said it was 23 visitors. So Google Analytics kind of goes beyond that, but it's using the same information. When you visit a website, websites like all servers have something called logs, which keep track of, like the captain's log, star date <laughs> 2020, 2020, 2020. It keeps track of every uh, visitor, and in the log, it enters uh, your IP address. That's, you know, that's the basic thing it can mm -hmm. enter. And that's how you do a count, because if it's a new IP address, it's a new person. Of course, uh, browsers are, reveal more than just the count these days. They also reveal, you know, your operating system, which browser you're using. Uh, the IP address can be used to geolocate you to show which country you're from. And Google Analytics records all of this stuff. Well, the Italian SA, you got to find the name of this, what this really stands for, something in a beautiful Italian accent. Uh, senza ag adeguate. Senza adeguate. Ag 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 right. <laughs> uh, does not allow, G SA is not going to allow GA because the website uh, collects Via cookies. See, they, they just hate cookies. They hate cookies. And they don't get cookies. You're cookie haters. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with cookies. You need cookies. Anyway, information on user interactions with the respective websites, visited pages, and services on offer. The multifarious, this is Italian. Wow. Translated into English. You could tell. The multifarious, a set of data collected in this collection, includes the user device IP address, yes, which, by the way, and there's some debate over this, but the, the, the general data protection regulation in Europe, GDPR, says that IP address is personally identifiable information, like your IP address. Wow. That means I, yeah, which means 
every website collects personal information because they have logs. Right. Now, what you can do is you can delete your logs periodically or immediately, but it's going to be written down. It's going to be recorded. So it's a little, I just think it's a little weird that they've decided that that's personally enough. It is, I guess, PII, but I don't know. I feel like, okay, fine. You're breaking the web. But this is my confusion about it is, isn't there a way in which collecting that data still falls within GDPR? Because there are other ways that people are collecting. That's why we have well, those cookie notices, right? Yeah, and there's this debate over IP address, which is, uh, is that PII? In which case, should you, as a user in the, the uh, European Union, should you be able to write to a website and say, hey, don't get rid of all that stuff about me you collected? And I think the latest is they consider it PII, personal identifiable information. Uh, it also collects, as I mentioned, from the browser operating system screen resolution. So why would you want screen resolution? Well, if you're a website, that might be germane as to how you draw the website, right? Yeah, if you've got mostly people that are coming on a laptop versus a, a mobile device, then maybe you want to make sure that the developers yeah. that you have on hand go towards Not the unreasonable. Laptop, yeah. Not unreasonable. And that's why analytics collects it. Uh it could be used to create a fingerprint because if you get enough information, enough data points about a visitor, you could say, well, you know, Micah's screen resolution is always this and he's always on this browser and he's on, and you add enough data points, I could say, well, that's, I'm pretty sure that's Micah. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the concern. Selected language. Well, of course you keep track of that. Yeah, because you want them to be able to go back to the same language. Go to an every Italian time. site and have it come up in Croatian? Right. Date and time of page viewing. Yeah, fine. So what? This information was found to be transferred to the U.S. of A. In determining that the processing was unlawful, the Italian S.A. Segurado Ahadahada reiterated that an IP address is, a pers is personal data. There you go, right there. And would not be anonymized even if were truncated, given Google's capabilities to enrich such data through the information it holds. So they're afraid of Google, afraid too, of Google. it sounds like. Yeah. They're afraid of Google. They think if they have the first three digits of the IP, they're like, oh, they're going to figure out the they're rest. They're going to figure it out. And they, you know what? They're not wrong. Yeah, fair enough. They're not wrong. Uh, it's just that, just like when you drive down a highway, your license plate is visible. Uh, it is how it works. That's <laughs> precisely right. This is how it works. It's how it works. How, how else are we going to... I mean, what does the future of the internet look Unless like? Unless every time you go to a website, you want it to say, well, who are you? What's your login? What's a, but then it's collecting data again. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, is it stored at that point? There's... Oh, I don't know. It's a mess. It's a, it's a huge mess. And those cookies, <laughs> that cookie announcement is such a, a good example of how this is not working. Uh, unfortunately, uh, look, I understand people's need to be private, especially lately. In fact, after yesterday's Supreme Court decision, all the big tech companies are suddenly on alert mm -hmm. that they need to protect people's privacy. Why? Well, uh, there's all sorts of things that you could reveal that might make you subject to prosecution in a number of states in the United States. And you know why. I don't have to tell you why. And so that is a big story these days, uh, is uh, is all of the tech companies are scrambling because, frankly, they live on information. Uh, New York Times, uh, this is from last month, Zeynep Tufiki, who's, a, who's great. She's a sociologist. We need to take back our privacy. This was after the... Uh, leak of the Supreme Court decision, which finally did come out yesterday over, ro overturning Roe v. Wade. Uh, she said, look, uh, this surveillance made possible by minimally regulated digital technologies could help law enforcement or even vigilantes track down, which is, by the way, legal in Texas, track down, you're allowed to go after a woman who seeks an abortion or even anyone who helps her. Women are urging one another to delete phone apps like period trackers that it can indicate they're pregnant. This is so there's the tension right there. You've got uh, the Italians, I understand, saying, look, you can't use Google Analytics on your web page. It collects too much information and then sends it back to the USA. And uh, you have privacy advocates. By the way, Google and others are now addressing this as well. They know. Mm -hmm. They know they are now 
kind of on the hook. U.S. tech industry frets, this is from Reuters uh, yesterday, about handing data to states prosecuting abortion. It's very likely, said a technology fellow at the Ford Foundation, Cynthia Conti Cook, there are going to be requests made to those tech companies for information related to search histories, to websites visited. Law enforcement in those states where it is illegal are very likely going to start subpoenaing Google, Yahoo, Facebook, saying, hey, we want to see those searches. So what? A, this is a very interesting position now these companies are in. They live on the data they collect. That's how they sell advertising. But now that data they collect can be weaponized against their users. Users, not just Italy, but all over the world, are saying, hey, stop spying on us. This is a very challenging thing for the tech industry. This is this is essentially undermining their business model. Right, yeah. And how, how do we strike a balance going forward where people's data is protected in these situations and it doesn't become an entire, you know, the, the whole page is just every time you have to go in and, and make your settings because nothing's being saved or right. tracked. Right, right. Uh, the Senate is looking at a major data privacy bill, and I think that there will now be the U.S. Senate, be some pressure on them to move forward on it. The bill's been stalled for a long time. It was a uh, privacy bill that would somewhat protect consumer privacy data. Uh, it's dead right now in the Senate because of various uh, roadblocks. Um some of which are coming from, for instance, the, the, the senator from the state of Washington, Maria Cantwell, who represents Microsoft and, uh, and Amazon. And I'm sure both of them have come to her and say, you know what? Uh, too much privacy is bad for business. We want some carve-outs so that we can collect information about our customers and our users. Very And Meta's been doing that for a long time across what the is whole it, is scope. It, you know, uh, look, we have ad, we're have we ad-supported. Ad mm -hmm. uh, my podcast, our podcast network is ad-supported. Um, those advertisers don't know, the people who buy the radio shows, for instance, don't know much. You know, there's ratings. They know kind of how many people roughly are listening. They don't know anything about them. They know their geographic location because... A radio station serves a certain, they call it ADI, Area of Dominant Influence, and advertisers buy that. That's why, you you know, you get the local car dealer and all the locals, because they're buying that area. But that's all they know. They don't, when you turn on a radio, you're not announcing your age. Right. Your sex, you know. The whether, antenna isn't broadcasting no. that from your vehicle. Right? And advertisers for years have done just fine with that. But now they want to turn your television into a spy device. Smart TVs have cameras on them. They have microphones. They're listening. They're trying to figure out who's listening for when. And if you go up and get a sandwich, <laughs> so you're not seeing the ad, they want to know that. And the more advertisers get that kind of data, the more they want it. And this is one of the reasons Google and Facebook are eating up the ad space, the digital ad space, because they can tell an advertiser everything. They can say, well, yeah, she's a 25-year-old woman living in uh, Northern California with an income of between forty and sixty thousand dollars a year, she likes running shoes, and uh, she has no kids. They know that, yeah, because you give them that information. In the case of Facebook, in the case of Google, every time you search, you're telling them something. And advertisers, once they get that, it's like crack; they can't get off of it. They haven't had it until now. It's not until digital technologies have they had that kind of. Best they would know is your zip code, which tells you a lot, but not everything about an individual. Now they want it all. Hmm. Now they want it all. It's a very, it's a challenging, and I don't know what the answer is. You know, I think maybe the answer is to tell advertisers, no, you can't have it all. Yeah, and that's kind of what uh, we see a lot of people yeah. trying to do with the different yeah. ad blocking and ad tracking yeah. protections. My friend, uh, our friend, Cory Doctorow, calls uh, ad blocking the largest consumer boycott in history. Because so many people, something like 20 or 30% of all web users use ad blockers. Wow, I didn't realize the number was it's as a big huge as it number. Is. Wow. That's a big boycott. That's people saying no. We won't. And you know it. what? I have to say, I don't know, what's your experience? When you turn off ad tracking, do the ads suddenly no longer work? I, what do you mean? They, I mean, they disappear. Oh, if I turn it, if, if I you turn block it, them, you don't see them. But right. what if you say, I don't, I don't want to be tracked? 
Uh, I mean, there are still ads, and they are maybe not as personalized, but uh, you know what? You know what? Ads work really well. Instagram ads. Yeah, yeah. And you know why? Yeah, you because know they know so much. <laughs> you can't block. You can't block tracking on Instagram. <laughs> they know it all. It's Facebook. Yep. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo is the phone number. We're going to go to that uh, phones in just a second. But first, I have to tell you how to. S oh, not yet. Oh well. It's all right. We'll come back in a moment. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guy, too. So that's, Jeremiah, where you would wait until I say... 20% off with interactive monitoring. <laughs> Not the phone number. I guess they didn't tell you that. So I'm going to have to do that ad right when I come back, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No. Yes. It should have been before this break. It's the last thing I say in the first segment. Look at the log. It's the L, the Simply Safe with the L on it. It's a, it's a live ad, live read before the ad break. So that's why I was saying don't break until you hear me say 20% off with interactive monitoring, not the phone number. That's, that's the old instruction. So next hour it'll be the, it'll be the same. But I'll do this Simply Safe ad after, uh, after we get back. Only in the first two hours. They should have filled you in on this. I, I apologize. No, 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 you didn't know. No one told you. I think I was trying to tell you, but I wasn't, obviously wasn't clear what I was talking about. It wasn't obvious what I was talking about. <laughs> Leo was saying something about interactive monitoring. I don't know when that comes. Yeah. Not the phone number now. It's now that ad, but only in the first two hours of the show. The third hour is like it used to be. <laughs> oh, I know. But Instacart what? is really bad about sharing information because oh, I bet. Instacart, you order groceries there and then you start seeing all of those groceries appear as suggestions on Amazon. Oh, uh, everywhere and, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's that one. I really, it's very upsetting. Well, yeah, I, but what's the harm of that? Yeah, that's fair. That in and of itself is fine. If they are selling that data, that's where I would have an issue with it. But you're right. That in I and mean, of itself is fine. Yeah. I mean, he likes Pringles. I know you don't. <laughs> but, yeah. but if you did. Yeah. Uh, then you see I guess coupons for Pringles everywhere else. Yeah, I'd want those I, coupons. To me, that harm is de minimis. And, and I've always said that. But the problem is now... See, the harm to me only occurs when it's things like the government using it to chase you down. Yeah. And uh, that's the problem is if this data now is subpoenable by the government, which it is, okay, now we got to rethink this because we're, we're, you know, we could be, you see me looking over your shoulder. I was worried that there were people messing stealing with my car, car or something. Yeah. <laughs> no. You'd, I'd, I'd scream. That's why I park out the window. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I give you the one and only Kim Schaffer, our phone angel. Hello, Kim. Hello. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. The weekend is here. It, it, yeah. <laughs> it's been a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week. It seems to go by faster and faster. Doesn't it? Well, I don't know. Now, this one you, seemed a little slow. <laughs> do you, well, you know what? I'm noticing there's a lot of daylight. Awful lot of daylight. Boy, yes. it seems like there's so much daylight. Until almost 9 p.m. 30, 9 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. The sun's still Too up. much daylight. Okay. Like, it's fireworks season, and that won't happen until after 9 p.m. Not, because it's light out. Not until in Petaluma, it won't. You they're not even. Gonna... They canceled our fireworks. Oh. They canceled during the the pandemic. They took an opportunity to cancel Petaluma, the Sonoma County that we're in, used to sell safe, so called safe and sane, safe and sane fireworks. Yeah. What does that even mean? 
Well, the problem was it was charities that were selling them all over town. You, you probably noticed that. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. No, you moved here uh, after yeah, that ended. Yeah. yeah. No, all over. Stands all over the place selling yeah. those. And now they're doing almost like the gun buybacks. They said, turn in your fireworks. There and is. Oh. There's a buyback at the fairgrounds. I was shocked when I read that the other day. It's going to be pretty lonely. In uh, July of 2019. Yeah, you so missed Jeremiah, it. turn off the music. You're going to, you, you missed, you missed... <laughs> Bring the band down behind me, boys. <laughs> I thought that was you playing the whole time, Kim. Yeah, she's good on the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Who should I? Uh, who should I talk to? Let's here? go to Dave in Chicago. Okay. Uh, this should be an Chicago easy one for Chicago Dave. You. Thank you, Kim. Hello, Chicago Dave. Hello, Leo. How are you doing? Well, we're doing great. What's up? That's good. Hey, I've been uh, listening to you for uh, quite a few years here, and uh, I took the plunge and uh, got a personal domain name. Yay. And listen to your uh, video there on the Ask Leo about setting those things up. And oh, good. kind of gave an overview. Oh, good. Um, that was good. I, I did have a couple questions, though. Um, so when I did the domain name, I used my full name. So first name, middle initial, last name, dot com. Is there any privacy issues with that? Should I have tried to be more creative? <laughs> well, now or? people know your full name. <laughs> right, right. I mean, right. I use, you know, I have leolaporte.com, for instance. I don't use it, but I have it. I don't have, I mean, everybody knows my name. Um, right. I, you know, I. you can, so a lot of times businesses will use the business name. But yeah, no, the only privacy concern when you get a domain name is, and you probably noticed this when you signed up, that you have to give them an administrative address, phone number, and email. And most people, you know, they're giving out their home phone, their home address, their email address. So a lot of the people, the so-called registrars, the place where you buy those domain names, will give you something called who is privacy. Uh, sometimes you pay for it, sometimes you don't. just depends on the policy of the registrar. And what that does is it obscures that information and gives a dummy address. They Then if they want to email or contact you, they do it through the dummy address, which is then forwarded on to your real address. So only the registrar knows your real address. Uh, okay. Does, so, does uh, Hoover do that? Because that's why you... Hoover does that automatically. That's the good news. Yeah, they're a sponsor. Uh, okay. I happen to know that yeah. because I... Not only are they a sponsor, that's where most of my domains <laughs> are. Uh, yeah, yeah, Hoover okay. does it automatically. So that's okay. that's the real privacy concern. Um, I mean, you know, your, your name is out there anyway. It's just like going to the mall uh, and... Uh, yeah. Driving to the driving to the airport, they see your, your, your driver's, uh, you know, your uh, license plate. And if I mean, you're signing up for a new service, you're probably putting in your name in there as well already. So you think WhoIs does not email. hide your name? I think your name is even seen in the WhoIs. It's just not the I think so yeah. address, phone number, and privacy. So that's the big privacy concern. A lot of that's just for spamming uh, spammers and stuff. Although you know, I'm not going to give. I don't want to give out my home address. People come there, knock on the door, say, hey, my Gmail's not working. Can you help? <laughs> my printer. My printer's Here. not. Oh, God, that would be the worst nightmare. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Scott Wilkinson, home theater guru, coming up. Our show today brought to you by, hey, Cisco Meraki, the experts in something we all need now, cloud-based networking for hybrid work environments. Whether your employees are working at home, at a cabin in the mountains, lockouts, or a lounge chair at the beach, Ooh, decisions, decisions. A cloud-managed network provides the same exceptional work experience no matter where they are. And that's important. Exceptional in two ways. In two ways. Uh, you may as well roll out the welcome mat because hybrid work is here to stay. Hybrid work works best in the cloud, right? Because then we're all working on the same stuff. There are definitely perks for employees, but also for leaders because workers can move faster, deliver better results. A cloud-managed network is, you know, a great boon for that. But leaders also can automate distributed operations, build more sustainable workplaces. So when they do come into work, you know, it's a better experience for everyone. And here's the other part. Yeah, it's great for employees, great for for you know flexibility but it also is important that it be security uh, focused right because you've got now employees off-prem and you want to be able to proactively protect your network an idg market pulse research report conducted for meraki highlights the top tier opportunities in supporting hybrid work first of all it's really interesting to see this hybrid work is a priority for 78 percent 
of C-suite executives. They understand. We understand, because I guess I'm, I'm an executive. Uh, we want to drive collaboration forward. I, I understand our employees very much want to be hybrid. Uh, we, but at the same time, we got to stay on top of productivity, obviously, and security as well. And those are some challenges of hybrid work. The IDG report raises the red flag about security, particularly noting that 48% of leaders report cybersecurity threats as a primary obstacle to improving workforce experiences. Always on security monitoring, that's a part of what makes cloud managed networks so awesome. IT can use apps from Meraki's vast ecosystem of partners. Turnkey solutions built to work seamlessly with the Meraki cloud platform. You can do asset tracking. You can do location analytics. You can do so much more. Gather insights on how people use their workspaces. In a smart space, environmental sensors can actively track how people are moving, what the occupation levels are. Uh, to stay on top of cleanliness, for example, to know how much space you need. You can reserve workspaces based on vacancy and employee profiles. It makes hot desking a lot easier and makes it easier for employees to scout out a spot and say, I'm going to reserve this. Locations in restricted environments can be booked in advance. Even You can even have time-based door access. So if people are coming in, you really know who's there and what they're doing. Of course, you need mobile device management as all these devices go out the door. Integrating devices and systems allows IT to manage, update, and troubleshoot company-owned devices, even when the device and the employer are in, I don't know, Barbados, <laughs> which is where I'm going. Wish I were. Turn any space into a place of productivity. Empower your organization with the same exceptional experience no matter where they work with Meraki and the Cisco suite of technology. Learn how your organization can make hybrid work work. Visit meraki.cisco.com slash twit. M-E-R-A-K-I, meraki.cisco.com slash twit. We thank them so much for supporting the Tech Guy Show. And if you're interested, please go there, but use that address so that you they know you saw it here. We want credit. Meraki, M-E-R-A-K-I dot Cisco, C-I-S-C-O dot com slash T-W-I-T. Thank you, Meraki. And now, back to the show. What is hip? Scott Wilkinson, our home theater geek, is hip. He is uh, an expert in small, flat, wide, curved, <laughs> and other kinds of screens. He's also uh, an expert in surround sound and does a podcast for the AVS Forum at youtube.com slash AVS Forum. Good day, Scotty. How are you? Hello, Leo. Doing good. Hey, Micah. Hello, Scott. Welcome. Good to, good to be with both of you. First of all, I want to say that my next the next episode of my podcast is coming up on Tuesday, live streaming at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on youtube.com slash AVS Forum. Uh, my guest will be a fellow by the name of Chuck Back, who's the managing director of Trinov. Uh, makers of very fine, high-end uh, home theater processors. And we're going to be talking about spatial audio and uh, room correction, correcting room acoustic anomalies electronically. So that's going to be a really interesting conversation. Chuck's a good friend of mine, been been for many years, a very smart fellow. So I encourage people you to You know how in. I uh, correct the audio in my room? I turn it up louder. <laughs> <laughs> it works it works well you know that does fl flatten out the fletcher munson curve there you go sure. that's what i tell my wife honey i'm flattening out the fletcher munson curve and she says i can't <laughs> she hear says, you what? over the sound of the music <laughs> <laughs> so yes thank indeed. you that'll be a good episode i'll look forward to that i, I think so i think so um, anyway, uh, mostly I wanted to talk today about a listener question I got from Ross Craig, who wrote and said that he wants um, a DAC, a digital to audio, digital to analog converter for his Apple products. And the first question you might might ask is, well, why? Apple products have a DAC built in, don't they? Yes, they do. They have to. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to use your headphones. You wouldn't be able to hear anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the DAC, though, on uh, AirPods, I think, is built into the AirPods. The DAC in, uh, you know, the any wireless device is built into the device. 
So you're not using the DAC built into the phone or the Correct. or the uh, laptop. But Correct. if you wanted to wire in some headphones to your laptop or your phone. Right. And the reason he wants it is he wants to listen to high resolution audio. Mm. On Apple Music or or other services that provide high resolution audio. And for that you really need a DAC that can do that. And the I, I don't remember what the specs are in the iPhone. They, uh, in as, fact, iPhone, we yeah, will tell you if you want to listen to this a true lossless blah 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 blah, you need to plug mm -hmm. in a DAC. So it'll even go as far really, as really it say, says that. Yeah, it actually pops up and says that. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. But because I always really thought cool. that uh, Apple devices had pretty good digital to analog converters. Maybe not as good as the thousand dollar. Well, but you don't have you know you don't have, you don't have to spend a thousand dollars. I I've done a lot of reviews of DACs uh, and with the iPhone in particular. And I, I do hear an improvement in quality when I attach an outboard DAC. Now, it's an extra little device that you have to plug into the phone and makes it a little less convenient. But yeah. if, you, if you're concerned mostly about quality, which I am, and apparently Ross is too, then you do want an outboard DAC. Um, now, at first he said, I wasn't sure if I wanted it for a 5.1 system or just stereo. And I went, oh, man, a 5.1 high-resolution DAC, that's thousands or tens really? of thousands of dollars yeah. wow that's yeah, the kind that's, of thing that you're gonna that you were talking about these uh these uh processor the, right correct the trinov processor would be an example of that yeah. and you know you're you're talking about at least 18 grand for that oh. uh so you know sure if you got unlimited funds go for it but here's the most, iphone saying external hardware suggested i am shocked that it actually says that I, I kind of am too. I don't, don't yeah. think I ever remember seeing that. Continue and high res lossless. You will need an external digital to analog converter. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's for Wi Fi uh, and wireless, uh, looks like streaming. Yeah, yeah. So that basically in the music settings, you can choose how you want your music to stream. High quality, lossless, or high res lossless. And I have mine set to lossless, which is fine. But if you want high res lossless, which it says ALAC, I can barely read it from here. A A mm. A L A C, which is Apple, right. lossless, Apple lossless Audio Codec. Codec, right. To mm. 24 bit. 192 kilohertz, mm -hmm. which is that high high bit rate, high res, high bit rate, and high 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 bit depth and high sample rate. Right, yeah. right, exactly. So it's a lot cheap. It's a lot. You can go a lot cheaper than that. Now, Leo, you and I have both had experience with my favorite DAC, yes. which is called the Hip DAC. Love the Hip DAC. Love the them so deck. much, I have two of them. So when the battery <laughs> dies on one, I, I'm always charging one, and I can listen right, on the other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's How's from that a spelled? company called uh, HipDAC. Oh, H -I -P just D A C, from a company called iFi. I F I. It's, it's to be specific: lowercase i, uppercase f, <laughs> lowercase i. <laughs> it's a British company. Uh, the HipDAC is 150 bucks. And it goes, I, I just I just looked up an article here on Engadget that has kind of the best DACs. And the iFi hip DAC, uh, 150 bucks, goes up to 32-bit, 384 kilohertz Whew. of sample rate, which is, there there isn't very much at that super high rate. Um, the highest rate typically that you, that you get is 192. So this is well within that. Um, it's got a battery, as Leo said, so it doesn't draw power from the iPhone, which I think is important. Um, you do need a uh, what's called an Apple. Is it called a camera converter? A camera kit? A kit that has. A, it's called a yeah. It's not a kit though. It's just a cable. It's not. It's just a cable. <laughs> yeah. That that has a lightning on one end and a, a USB, USB. Yeah. A uh, type A. A type A on the other yeah. side that plugs into the into the hip deck. Right. Um, but it's it's solidly built, really high quality sound. It's just it's just wonderful. Now, <laughs> in this uh, in this uh, and gadget article, you can get even higher resolution than that with the FIO F I I O Q three, which is also one hundred and fifty bucks. I've bought a lot of FIO devices over the years, and I think have you? Quite I've good. never I've never actually yeah. tried one. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, that's goes, one I have. Yeah. yeah. There you go. 
It goes up to 768 kilohertz. That's silly. That's <laughs> it silly. is silly. Your ears can't it tell is the difference, silly. right? No. Even no. A, a brand new baby. <laughs> Even a that. brand new baby. According can't to the that. Fletcher Munson Nyquist theorem, <laughs> you're you probably actually overdoing it if you're going anywhere past 24 bit. Uh, 90, 96 kilohertz. 96 kilohertz. That's twice gonna... the re twice the resolution of what you can hear, and the Nyquist theorem is that's all you need. You, any more than that, bits are wasted. In fact, there's some argument that introduces harmonic distortions and things that might, well, might make it yes, worse. Yes, there is there is some argument there, but on the other hand, there's also argument that even ultrasonic frequencies can be perceivable emotionally perceivable well yeah, per, yeah emotionally like perceivable but <laughs> yeah. subconsciously there's even one theory that says it, it, if they impact on your skin you'll you'll hear them but of course that doesn't matter in headphones nobody argues that l there's nothing better than live music that's Correct. sitting in amongst the performance <laughs> the yep. musicians which yep. you get to do scott because you're a musician is yep. the most accurate and the most emotional and feels the best. But there, no, we can no longer sit amongst the musicians with its, with the Beatles or with the Led Zeppelin or Miles Davis. There are many, many artists that recordings are the only way we can hear them. Correct, correct. Now, one thing we're going to talk about on the show, on my podcast on Tuesday, is uh, spatially mixed recordings. Mm -hmm. So you can, in fact, in those cases, sit amongst the musicians. That would be nice. That would be nice, yeah. What? It's 88, be great. 88 Ask Leo. Thank you, Scott. We're going to go back to the phones in a bit. If you want to see Scott's podcast, youtube.com slash AVS forum. Thank you, Scotty. You bet. This is my new vocal warm-up. <laughs> you learned something from Joanna. Hold on a sec. All right, so all... Yes, I did. In fact, tell her I'm going to be uh, calling her for my, my my second appointment after I get back. But all Excellent. yours now for three minutes and whatever seconds. Yes, no problem. So, hey, everybody. So nice to see you all. Actually, I don't see you, but I see you here in the chat room. Beatmaster says, I understand getting a good da good DAC for desktop laptop usage, but for a phone, it seems like the law of diminishing returns will strike. Will the phone you're on, the Go, and many outside factors prevent a true audiophile experience, in my humble opinion? Well, it depends on your environment. Uh, the phone, I believe, I'm pretty sure, is capable of transmitting digitally high-resolution audio. Now, whether it's limited to 24-bit 96 or 32-192 or something even higher, that I'd have to do some research on. I don't actually know. But um, sure, if you're on the go, if you're out on, on a walk or in your car, which you wouldn't want to be listening to headphones anyway, um, the environment plays a huge part. And so if you're in a noisy environment, it's not going to make any difference. You're, you're not going to hear the subtle difference between high res and what, what we often call CD quality or even worse, compressed, highly compressed music like MP3. If you're in a noisy environment, I just listen to MP3 because it doesn't matter. If I'm out on a walk and I'm listening to music on my phone, I don't bring the DAC with me. Because it doesn't matter. There's birds and cars going by and lawnmowers and what have you. So, you know, it doesn't matter. But if you're in a quiet room and you're listening on your phone, you know, maybe you're not at your desk where you have your, um, where you have your, you know, in a DAC that's for desktop. And in which case, a portable DAC is, is a really good thing. Uh, speaking of which, I didn't mention this in my segment, but I wanted to point out that in this Engadget article about the best DACs, they do mention one that's specific for desktops. And since you bring it up, I'll bring it up here, which is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. And I have one of these. It's actually a, uh, a USB audio interface, uh, which by definition, would have a DAC in it. And uh, it goes up to 24-bit 192, which is perfectly fine. And it's a beautiful device. It really works well. Solidly built. 
excellent quality focus right which is f o c u s r i t e um has long been in the professional audio business and getting one of these it's 160 bucks so it's about the same price as the uh, hip DAC, uh and the uh, fio q3 they're that those are both 150 bucks so we're certainly in the same ballpark um but if you want something specifically for the desktop, and especially if you want an input device that has an ADC, an analog to digital converter, so if you're a recording artist, or even if you're even if you're just on the phone uh, doing doing uh, Zoom chats with people, uh, plugging in a nice microphone into this device uh, is is a big improvement over what. Uh, you know, just using the microphone built into the computer. Um, so this device goes both ways. The other ones, the HipDAC, the FIO Q3, others like them, only go in one direction. You're, they're only output. This is output and input, and it works beautifully. Scott, you want to stick around for the top? Happy to. What goes up must, must go come down. Little blood, sweat. The tears. Leo Laporte, Mike is Sergeant, your tech guy too. Ben in Louisville, Kentucky. I like saying that. Louisville. Hello, Ben. Hey, Leo. Welcome. How are you today? I am very well. What can I do for you today? Oh, it's a kind of a complicated <laughs> tech story. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I want to get an Apple Watch for my birthday on July 16th. I'm Happy birthday! 31. Yeah, you deserve an Apple Thank Watch. Thank you, my friend. Yes, yes. Well, well here's the thing. Um, my family comes from a very good money background. However, my dad retired a couple of years ago, and we're looking at getting kind of a cheapo one because, uh, you know, I don't want to go out and spend thousands of dollars on an Apple Watch. Well, good news is they, they don't even make, they used to make one that cost $10,000. They didn't even make expensive ones, really, really expensive ones anymore. I think the top one is 500 Well, bucks. I was just wanting, you know, because here's the thing. I have autism, you know, and I want to get something that will keep a good track of my health and things good. like that. Because, you know, good. I have a real problem. I have a real problem with sticking with my workout routine and stuff like that. And also... I don't like carrying my phone around in my pocket because I have a 12 Pro iPhone, and that thing just has a really hard time staying in my pocket. Yes. So I felt, you know, I want to get the cellular version of the Apple Watch, which I know is a bit more costly. But anyway, so I was wanting to ask your advice, and maybe Mike as well, because I know he's your resident tech in Apple. And I was wanting to see what you guys think as far as me getting this for my birthday. And, and of course, use the student discount to the Apple Store and whatnot, but... The point is, I want to know which version of the Apple Watch you guys would recommend for me and that kind of a thing. If you want to save money, but you want to get an uh, Apple Watch that's cellular, then my suggestion for you is to go with the aluminum okay. version of the Apple Watch. Uh, you get the most okay. recent uh, series. We're on Series 7 now. And the reason I suggest that okay. is... I have had an aluminum Apple Watch since the beginning, since the Series Zero Apple Watch, and I've never had problems with okay. it. It doesn't dent. There's nothing there that you have to worry about. You know, if you're trying to be bougie okay. and step it up, then the stainless steel model is fine. But I'm bougie. <laughs> yeah, I actually bought the titanium yeah, one that they offered. Yeah, guy. don't I be bougie. It's it's, it's silly. It. It's actually for anybody, money or not. It's silly to buy anything but the aluminum because it's the same guts. Yep. Now what? about the SE, though? You can get the SE with cellular. That would save him even more money. It would. My concern there is that if you really are trying to do this exercise tracking, this health tracking, you're not going to get the same on that uh, model that you will with the Series 7. The Series 7 has the most up-to-date uh, What's new sensors. in the 7? So the, the sensors uh, that are tracking your heart rate are upgraded, and so those are better at being able to track your heart rate and uh, your oxygen yeah. saturation those kinds of things and then the, uh, the the different sensors inside that all combine to measure your movement are updated as well so there are some metrics that you won't get on the SE the SE is the three yeah. I think yeah it's so that'll give you some idea yeah. of the 
you know, it's four generations uh, ago. That's how come four it's generations old. Yeah. yeah, it's three twenty nine, and okay. if he's getting the uh, cellular with the uh, seven, now you're you're getting close to um, I want to say four ninety nine. I mean, it it does go up a lot. Four ninety nine, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, how about band? Oh. Should he get? I would suggest if you're going to work out a lot, I have fairly large hands because I'm one. I'm six foot seven tall oh you're big guy. well get the 40 get the 45 millimeter one that's the large face and it's not not gonna be too big for you that's what yeah, i wear and I, uh, it's not gonna be I've too got big tiny for you. wrists and it's what i wear and it's but too big. i would suggest yeah, that you that's not that's get a, a fancy band save money on the band agreed and they offer i think i, the, the, I don't i like to get the uh the rubber bands because good so they have solo loops, which are really just rubber bands. They don't even have a buckle or anything, but you got to get those sides just right. Otherwise, they won't fit. They also have, I that think... That would be the, very uncomfortable for Okay. Sure. Then get, get the regular sport band, but also look at the sport loop. That's a, basically a Velcro, okay. a hook and loop okay. design. Those are, we call those yeah, the fine. sweat band, mm -hmm. the sweat pants of watch bands. They're the sweat very pants. comfortable. They're very comfy. And breathable. Well, Wet really easily. Yeah, and they're, and they're washable, mm -hmm. so you can run them through the washing machine if they get sweaty. You'll probably get another one. Yeah, that's always as good a, to know, as a backup. Watch itself because I don't want to damage. No, 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 no. You just uh, don't you get, wash the watch. You get yes. like a little zipper um, delicates bag, is what it's called. You put all your watch bands inside of it, zip oh, that up, smart. throw it in the washer. And of course, the rubber bands you can just wipe yeah, off. Rubber bands don't need you don't to have there. to wash this. So yeah, yeah I always put on a, I always put on a rubber band when I'm going to uh, work out because I don't want to sweat into uh, any of the other bands the metal cool. bands or the leather bands cool well i'll let my dad know about this uh all that you guys have said and i don't know if you can like put this how would i find all this information after the show if i wanted to well, you just head to techguylabs.com. There you will find links that we have. I've, I've pulled up a, a watch model that was one that we were talking about. So you'll be able to see that and kind of cool. customize it to exactly how you want it. How I want it. Okay. Well, thank you, Mike. And thank you, Leo. And Anytime. Also, Leo, um, also, I want to tell you, I watched some of your old shows from the past. And I also uh, watched your original iPhone launch uh premiere oh that was a fun. while ago oh was that fun yes yes i've been a loyal apple fan since and uh i want to thank you for keeping going and keep doing what you're doing my friend oh thank you ben i really appreciate it you keep listening and uh i'll be thinking about you and your nice watch on july what was it 19th 16th 16th happy birthday all right well thank you later all right ben take care that's a good uh, birthday present. Yeah, that's a really good one. Our uh, son uh, got his first job. He's 19, first job at uh, In-N-Out Hamburgers. Oh, nice. And uh, I, I, we got him a watch because he can't carry his phone. That's, by, by the way, probably a good rule with the younger generation these days because they're, you know, these phones are so addictive. Focused on it. You could instead see of he'd be, you know, they'd, they'd be standing there going, you, "Did you want a burger? What? Uh -huh. No, hold on a second. I have to insta this." And uh, so they don't let them have phones. But but we thought, well, if we get the cellular uh, watch with cellular, he'll. I mean, he could just say, "Well, I need to know what time it is, so I'm not late for my shift." But he can also kind of keep up without, Absolutely. you know, being distracted. Yeah, it's not as easy to interact. Exactly. And we can call him every five minutes to see how he's doing. <laughs> First job, you know. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. More to come after this. Poor Michael. So embarrassed by his dad. It's just like, I'm so proud of him. All right, Scotty, your turn now. Hello. <clears throat> Whoa, hello, everybody. Oh, you know what you need? You need some I, hand sanitizer. Just spray <laughs> this in your mouth and it clear. Wait a minute, wrong one. There wrong you go. One. Actually, uh, yeah, I found something at um, at Nam one year that um, that really is Joanna's quite interested in. Uh, it's called a vocal mist. Oh, I need she it. Recommended that to me. It's, it's oh, actually, she didn't mention that to me. I, well, I when, just I just had a session with her and she recommended it to me, and I'm definitely uh, looking at getting one of those. Vocal really mist. Cool. What is it? Yeah, doing? yeah. It's a nebulizer that actually oh. uh, puts uh, moisturizes your vocal cords directly. <laughs> Do you have to put a tube can't... down your throat? No, 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 a, no, no, a... no, 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 no. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a thing you you that that puts out a fine fine water vapor 
that you breathe in. It's kind of like a mini humidifier, but it uses it's like a mini humidifier, but targeted a saline solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's 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 very good. Let I, me know I how you it. like it, Micah. I will do that. Myvocalmist.com. Yeah. There you go. That's it. Because hmm. hmm. we've we've determined that that's actually one of the, the, the well that is pretty much the one issue for me is that right in the back of my throat it gets dry right where my vocal cords sort of meet the back of my throat and so we're looking at different ways to help with that because my mouth doesn't get dry all that much but that area does right so this could be helpful and with that my little brother had to use be... a nebulizer for um breathing issues when he was a kid oh so this is like a this big is just one. like a spritzer or no so it's, it's active huh? yeah it's like a little mister hmm. a little mister that you that has, I think, I think it has. That's a what little, I call Michael. <laughs> hey, little Mister, little mister. get in here. <laughs> It'll even warm but, it too, so it's like a warm yeah. saline solution. Oh, this looks kind of cool. perfect for your vocal. Cords. Oh, this looks really cool. Yeah, it's yeah, a little pricey, it's really good. so yeah. I'm, I'm more just it eyeballing it pricey. right now. But uh, it's like a little precious. Excuse me, I have to go spend some time with my vocal Mister. <laughs> what does your vocal Mister do? You wouldn't want to know. <laughs> Wow, you have to put it over your face? Well, you can do it two different ways. You can just have it in front of your face and just kind of uh, breathe in, or you can get one of those masks. If I lived in Vegas, I'd have this for sure. Yes. I, yes. I think that my voice has taken time to adjust because I come from Missouri where humidity is the, right. the, the it's still standard. It's still 70 or 80% here, but it's not like, well, maybe it's not 70 or 80, but it's, yeah, we're a little drier. Yeah, definitely drier. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Vocal mist portable nebulizer. Mm hmm. Oh, this 108 bucks isn't the worst. No, not for something no. that is I was thinking 500 bucks. Your uh, money maker, especially. Yeah, if you if you guys your money Spritz maker my is your money voice. maker. <laughs> 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 all right, Scotty, it's all yours. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> twisted Mister, there's literally smoke coming out of my ears right now. I got blisters on my fingers. Shonk. Um, Harry, I think the vape pens use the same tech. No, I don't think so. Um, redacted. Let's talk TVs. Sure. What do you want to talk about? TVs are always a good subject. Um, I suspect once we get a house, we're, we're, we're going out right after this to, uh, to do more house hunting. Still haven't found the one yet. <clears throat> Sorry to say. But, uh. When we do, I'm probably going to treat myself to a new TV. I've had my Sony OLED uh, for several years now, and it's still working great. Don't get me wrong. It works wonderfully well. I love the look of it. Um, but, you know, technology moves on. Not that OLED technology has gotten that much different. It's still what it is. I might very well get a Samsung QD OLED. Uh, I'm waiting to hear to see a couple more reviews on that, but um, assuming that it pans out as it has initially, uh, then uh, that that may very well be the one. If I can fit one, I'm going to get a 77 inch, and I don't remember if Samsung makes a 77 or 75 QD OLED. It might only be 55 and 65. I'm not 100 percent sure of that. <laughs> Phoenix Warp One. Any tips for a deep, very white level voice? Hey, baby. Uh, no, I, do, I don't have a, a very white voice. And uh, that is more or less genetic, I think. If you push your voice down too far, uh, my wife will certainly scold you. Because you want to you wanna be in the range where you're naturally at. And if you push down too far, you can do some damage. Uh, a lot of women do that in, in professional, you know, voice using women. They, they try to sound low and sexy, uh, but they damage their voice as a result. So she is not, uh, not a big fan of that. Uh, Beatmaster, why not a Sony QD, QD OLED? At least you get Dolby Vision. You know, you're exactly right. I had forgotten about that, but you're exactly right. And so that may very well be the one to get. And whether or not they make a 75 inch, maybe they do. I don't know. Probably not. Probably both companies in this first generation are making the same sizes because that's what the panel manufacturer is making. 
Um, and but you're exactly right. I do want Dolby Vision, and Samsung doesn't give it to you. Michael says, uh, "How do you get rid of your old Sony? Will you sell it or donate it?" Um, that's a good question. I'll probably donate it. Um, that's probably what I'll do. Some some worthy charity around here could could use a new TV. Well, it's not new new to them. Um, oh, Twisted Mister, did I ever look into the Sony QD OLED color tracking scandal? No, I forgot about that, and you've reminded me, and thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look at that. Uh, it reminds me very much of the Volkswagen diesel scandal, where it works fine under test conditions, but in the real world, it it freaks out. Uh, UJ, exactly. The Sony QD OLED A95K. Um, so that that may very well be. Keith Keith 512 says LGC2. Yes, if I were going to get a regular OLED, that's what I would get. An LGC2, 77 inch. Uh, Redacted says, I want a Mariah Carey range. She used to have a super high range and an amazing what's called whistle register. She could, she could, sing up in the whistling range of things. I'm not sure she can do that anymore because she ain't the spring chicken she used to be. Uh, MacBookie verifies that the Samsung QD OLED only comes in 55 and 65. I'll bet you the Sony, that's true for the Sony as well. Um, ZZZZZ says the Sony only has two HDMI 2.1 inputs. Uh, well, yeah, that's maybe limited, but that's enough for me because I'm switching somewhere else. I only have one cable going to the TV. Uh, and Beatmaster, you're exactly correct. Selling old TVs is near impossible because they they don't cost anything. They, I mean, they're so the prices are so low, especially several years old like this one is. Um, I had a couple of old, old review TVs when we moved out of uh, L.A., and I just gave them away. I gave them to neighbors because it wasn't. There was no point. It was much too much hassle to uh, to sell them, and it, I would have gotten so little. Um. Anyway, oh, <laughs> Ozana is uh, still waiting for Panasonic Tube TV from 1989 to die. That's hilarious. Hey, man. Could do what I did with the old computer at the radio station. I made it die. Oh yeah? Did you blow it up? <laughs> I just it stopped working one day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it stopped working. Mm -hmm. All right, Scott. Give our regards to your lovely wife. I shall. And we will see and you next week. See you next week. All right. Thank you, sir. Have fun. Bye bye. Oh, 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 before we go on with the Tech Guy show, can I tell you about Acronis? We've talked about Acronis and the Tech Guy for years. They made, still make, uh, the best disc imaging product, I think, out there, Acronis True Image. Well, they've realized something, and I think it's actually a great insight. When you're using an Acronis True Image, I, one of the things I like about it is very quickly you get a whole image of everything on your drive that you can restore in minutes, so it's a very good way of you know, saving your drive state completely. But they realize something which I've been asked about before, which is, well, yeah, but if I have malware on there, am I not backing that up? And that is, yes, you are. So you're restoring whatever's on your drive. So Acronis realized that they created a new product, Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, that solves this problem. Formerly Acronis True Image. So you've got all that benefit of, you know, Acronis backing up the images. It's all the nice features of that, but it also has malware scanning so before you image your drive you can make sure that it's clean which i think is brilliant stop any cyber attack from damaging your data applications or systems so it works as an antivirus will to block attacks in real time but you also can find any hidden infections lurking on your system with very powerful flexible antivirus scans so that's why you need both. I am a big fan of Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office. I've always used Acronis True Image. I think they're very smart to build in this cyber protection. In addition, it's Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. 
Uh, you can back up whatever you want. You don't have to back up the whole system, although you know that's one of the main reasons you would use this. You can also restore a whole system in minutes or individual files, so it's it is good. It is a real backup, and you have your choice of storing that image on prem locally next to you. I would do that, or in the Acronis Cloud, I would do that too. So it gives you. Yes, you know, off-site as well as local backup. It's really a great solution. And they've added a feature that I think everybody who uses Microsoft 365 will love, direct cloud-to-cloud -cloud backups of your Microsoft 365 account. So that's your Outlook. Yes, all of your OneDrive. Because, yeah, sure, you put stuff on OneDrive, but if anything happens to that, you need a backup of that too. So this does this is great. It, and you don't have to download it and upload it. It does it directly cloud to cloud. Very easy management because it's all in one. So it's a, a you know simple way to do this. You eliminate the the problem of multiple incompatible solutions. Uh, of course, less cost, but less complexity. Everything is managed through a simple, intuitive interface. And I also think you'll really appreciate how easy it is to set up a Cronus Cyber Protect Home Office. It's simple, two-click setup, easy set and forget options. And you want that because you don't want to be fussing with your backup and your malware protection all the time. You want to just say, look, let me know if there's a problem. You take care of it. Acronis really is the king of the hill on, on imaging. And I'm really glad to see that they've bundled it now with a way of making sure your image is clean. Rest assured, your entire digital world is protected with integrated protection. Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, formerly Acronis True Image, more than just a backup. More than just an antivirus, peace of mind is knowing your devices and backups are protected. Your data is safe, accessible, private, authentic, and secure. Keep your digital world safe from all threats with the only cyber protection solution that delivers a unique integration of data protection and cybersecurity in one. And I love the Acronis Cloud, too. Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, formerly Acronis True Image. Find out more. Go to the website, go.acronis.com slash techguide, G-O dot A-C-R-O-N-I-S dot com slash techguy. This is, for years, a product we've recommended, Acronis True Image, solving that one little last piece, which is you don't want to back up malware, making sure you've got a good image locally in the cloud. That's just, it just seems to me like a no-brainer. Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office. Visit go.acronis.com slash tech guy. And now back to the tech guy program. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, Micah Sargent, your tech guys on the radio. 8888-ASK-LEO and Micah is the phone number. 888-827-5536-571933442. Two, two. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to do this last number. It's just 827-5536 and the 888 area code. 888 means it's toll free in the U.S. or Canada. Outside that area, just uh, use Skype out and you should be able to reach us. Anything with tech, anything with a chip in it, it's all fair game. Dink on the line from Las Vegas. Hello, Dink. Wow, Leo, I never thought in 100 years I would ever call you. Because I don't know if I should be if I should be uh, should be honored about that. About that? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's because I'm the dumbest person on the face of the earth when it comes <laughs> to tech. So, um, I I just have a hopefully quick question. I was kind of listening there while I was on hold about the conversations about televisions. Um, we just moved from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Um, finally, are able to kind of have a home that isn't you know uh, hindered by the fact that we had kids all these years. And we brought some TVs with us, but each one of them has something kind of uniquely wrong with them. <laughs> we have a 55 inch, I don't know what it is, it's still in a wrapped up blanket, that um, doesn't, it's not as smart as it needs to be anymore because it's older. Yeah. Um, I have another smaller one that for some reason, anytime I'm watching anything on Netflix, it's as though I've zoomed in and I'm watching people's <laughs> nostrils and earlobes. Wow. That's not good. That's a feature, not a bug. I'm going to make sure, wait, before you go farther, let me make sure Scott doesn't leave the building. Scott! 
Come back, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I'm still here. Oh, good, because uh, I think Scott might have something to say about this. Well, the the TV, I'm I am ready to do what Scott said, which is to give them away, um, because I'm going to have somebody come in and put mounts up and that kind of stuff. And the home we built, the bot has a built-in like five speaker system. Don't even know if that nice. works or not. Nice. And, and so I guess I'm just trying to get an idea of now since I haven't bought a television in forever. What what I don't what is this cutie OLED? I've never heard of this before. What is that? And <laughs> what can you help me with? So uh, there is actually on Ars Technica just put out a very good explainer about all the different technologies uh, that you can see: LCD versus LED versus Mini LED versus OLED, QLED, QRD LED, and all of, all of the above. So I'm gonna. Uh, that, I'm going to put a link in the show notes, but if it's it's at a website, a technology website, it's quite good. Ars Technica, A R S T E C H N I C A dot com. But we'll put a link at techguylabs.com. It's a good article that gives you the explainer. It's probably more than you need to know. So I'm going to let Scott kind of summarize in uh, in 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 ten words or well, no, not that short. I'll give you a hundred words. What should he be looking for today in a TV? Well, if 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 you're looking to spend as little as possible, well, wait a minute. Let's uh, have, let's find out. Let's find out what the budget is. What's the budget? That's a good question. Uh, at the, at this point, the budget is my wife is go asking why don't we have televisions on the walls yet? We call that so, S <laughs> we call it S A F. That's another acronym to learn. It's spousal acceptance factor. In this case, <laughs> you have a high S A F. I believe yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So uh, Still, let's, if you're, if you're, you're going to spend two thousand dollars, let's say, and we and we also want to say you should get a bigger TV than you think. Fifty five right. is fine, but honestly, I uh, if this is going to be your main set, I would say look at a seventy inch or more. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and I think okay. you can get very good seventy inch TVs in the two thousand dollar, roughly two thousand dollar range. Am I wrong, Scott? No, no, you're you're right. Um, I don't. I'd have to do a little research to find exactly what the, we're talking about. The best about. TVs out there right now are OLED or Q, or QD LED. QD, QD OLED. QD OLED. Uh, QD OLED is marginally expensive. better, but it's going to be more expensive. And then the and next you're best. Not gonna, you're not going to get a 70 inch OLED for two thousand dollars. Okay, not even the LG C series or anything like no, that. No, no, no. Uh, where should he go to buy these? I don't know Vegas uh, TV stores very well. Well, I don't either. Yeah. Um, I generally tend to prefer to buy locally rather than TVs, that is, uh, rather than like from Amazon or whatever, because if you do have a problem, returning it it's a lot is easier. much easier. Although I, easier. I do yeah. buy my TVs I'm, on Amazon, and if you buy white gloves... I'm not gloves, an Amazon person. Okay, yeah. that's fine. No. There's probably a Magnolia I'm, I'm in town. Kind of there part. is, or a Best Buy... There's undoubtedly a Best Buy. In fact, I know there is. I bought stuff there in Vegas. Yeah, right. yeah. So go to Best Buy. They'll have a lot of choices. Do not judge a TV <laughs> by what you see on the show floor, on the store floor. Those are set to be very bright, very dynamic, and they're not going to ref properly reflect what you're going to get. I see. Okay. Uh, so, so know when you before you go in there, know that you're going to get. I would say, Scott, what about what about a. Uh, uh, LCD. Should he look at a mini LED uh, LCD? I, I would. I think that's probably the best in, in this particular case. Although I just looked up um, at Best Buy, the LG 77-inch C1, last year's OLED, is 2600 bucks. So it's a little over the... Ooh, that would be excellent. Now, the only negative on that is they're not as bright as the LCDs. These are two Correct. different technologies. So if you can't... If you're, if you're going to watch in the daytime and you can't draw the curtains... But most people are watching at night, in which case it's not going to be an, an issue. We, you know, right. And what what exactly. if we're in a situation where we we got Wi-Fi hooked up to the house, but we did not get cable or Dish or Directv or anything like that? Our intention is to basically watch streaming stuff. You're very lucky though, because Vegas is really big on ATSC 3.0. Oh. Which means the, that? the the broad <laughs> yeah well I don't Lots blame of letters you. is what it is. The means the broadcast stations in Las Vegas are supporting a new standard, which can give it's called next gen TV, which can give you 4K over the air. 
So you well, you might be looking. Although, although it, I doubt it's 4K over the air. They're yeah, not broad. Most they people can, don't. Yeah. but most broadcasters aren't. Yeah. Um, and do you have to have an antenna on your house? You, or you what? do. Yes. Yeah. Although yes. again, you're not far because you're in Vegas. You're not far from the towers. You could, and you could have an indoor antenna. That's possible. That would possibly work as well. I'll but put, I'll put a think, link uh, in the show notes also to an article about 4K, uh, or, or rather, ITSC3 rolling out in Vegas. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to have a whole page just for Dink. Just for Dink. <laughs> this is Dink's page. No, but you're asking the questions everybody wants to know. So this is really uh, appropriate right now. Um, well, exactly. It does, it's going to depend on budget, location, screen size, the room where the speakers are. Yeah. You're, you're in order to power those speakers. It presumably has some sort of receiver. The question is whether you'll be able to use it with a TV or not. If it's yeah, an I old, don't know. Deep, yeah, you're going to need Go to get a receiver to power those speakers and to pass the uh, the HDMI, the the video signal onto the TV. Another quick thing I want to say is you're going to get a smart TV. But Leo and I both agree it's better to have a separate streaming box like an Apple TV or Plus Roku. or Roku yeah. um, because, A, the TV's not going to spy on you. You don't have to connect the oh. TV to the Internet. And you have much greater uh, upgradability and mm -hmm. and flexibility with a separate box. So, And that's only like 100 bucks. So, Do you need one of those for each TV? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. How many TVs are you getting? Well, we have a, a downstairs, you know, main room, which is where the largest one would go. Uh, then we are finally going to put one, uh, although the SAF that you mentioned is not in favor of this, um, <laughs> I'll put one in the bedroom as well. Uh, and since we weren't getting paying by the television for cable or whatever it was, I thought, oh, well, maybe we'll put one in the guest bedroom as well. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the guests get the cheapest, crappiest TV, probably one of the old ones. Bed <laughs> okay. I found that uh, we end up watching TV most on our OLED TV, wherever that is, the 4K OLED. That's going to look the best. You always want 4K. You always want HDR. <laughs> Smart TV, you're going to get whether you want it or not. Whether That's it's right. whether it's good is another matter. You're probably still going to want to get an external box. Um, we got to wrap it up. Anything else uh, we should we no, should? No, listen, guys. Thank you so much. I again, my brother makes his living in IT, and it obviously skipped a generation. <laughs> <laughs> Dink, I used to go to uh, college with a guy nicknamed Dink. He was the great grandson really? of J.P. Morgan. Are you uh, that Dink? No, I am not. <laughs> it is it is my given name, and it was my great grandfather. Ah, ah, and it was the nickname of the midwife who delivered him. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> that's very I'm just sweet. Really glad she wasn't named Mildred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mildred. Have a have a great day. And thank All you, right, Scott, thank for you. for sticking around. You 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 can yeah. go home now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot more to say about buying a TV. Um, Mike and I both go, oh, no, no, put it in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, because then you'll go to sleep watching TV. That's always a bad idea. Yep. It's... We have it in the bedroom, but it's not facing the bed. Oh, that's good. So we have a big enough bedroom that we can have a separate kind of little living room, living, you know, area where we have a sofa that Lisa hates, but at least it's a sofa, and that's where the, and the TV. So you, we, we, we can't go to bed and watch TV, which I think is the important thing. Yep. You don't um, want to be staring at a television before you yeah, go to bed. It's too easy. It's too easy. Yeah. Now I stare at my phone instead. <sighs> Let me tell you about your suprachiasmatic nuclei and how they don't like all that light shining into them. I know. Them. I know. I know. Good, Mike B. Good. Uh, but, and we have a big, so we have, I think it's probably smart if you have three locations like that to choose different things for each location. So for instance, our living room is the biggest screen. That's a projector, short throw projector. That's a hundred inches. So that's good for social. Mm -hmm. It's not a great picture because it's a projector. It's a little washed out as a result, but that's good when people are over or we're cooking dinner and everybody's kind of in different spots. So, uh, that's nice. And then if we really want to enjoy something, by the way. Do you have Hulu? I do, yes. The Old Man. The Old Man. Oh, mm, mm. it is the best show I've seen in a long time. So the dude, a.k.a. Jeff Bridges, 
is the old man. His nemesis is uh, the fabulous... God, I can't remember his name right now because I am an old man. <laughs> um, it is such a good show. And the third episode came out on Friday. I was worried because the first episode was so good. And I thought, they can't keep this up. And the second episode, yeah, maybe a little less good. The third episode, so good. I'm going, this is the best show I've ever seen. This, well, which it's probably not, but it's really good. Um, who's the other guy? John Lithgow. Thank you. So John Lithgow. So I don't want to tell you too much. In fact, yeah, I'm not going to yeah, tell you any more yeah. because at first it starts so perfectly. At first, at first, you just go, well, I, it's a, yeah, it's called The Old Man. It's about a really old man. All right, The Old Man. I'll watch that for sure. Isn't it good? So good. It's on FX. You can watch it there. But if you have Hulu, you can watch it without commercials, which I always like to do. And... And such a twist in episode three. It's like, <gasps> <laughs> so good. I'm sorry, I'm not interrupting this song. I'm going to listen the, <laughs> the whole way through. The whole way through. In college, we played this album over and over and over and over and over again. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Micah Sargent, also the tech guy. So there's two tech guys. Two of us. If two you like the music, Lord. now it's not Professor Laura today. Jeremiah is in for Laura, so that's great. If you like the music you hear, don't worry. We, we write it all down. Right, Jeremiah? Right. <laughs> He's keeping track. And then, uh, yes, he says yes. And then uh, on Sunday, we add it to the show notes. So there's a, a link to all the songs. But this is, of course, Roundabout by Yes from the album Yes Songs. Uh, actually, it's on two... It's on Fragile as well, but Fragile's the studio. I think he's playing the studio version. I wow. We listened to the live version, Yes songs, over and over and over again. I'm impressed. <laughs> no, no. I only remember things from when I was under 30. After that, which, by the way, you should make a note of, because you're almost 30. Yeah. You're gonna, that's it. So everything, especially music. Okay. They say your musical tastes freeze at the age of 27. Interesting. And that's it. You still like Waterfalls by TLC, may I point out. <laughs> that that you weren't even you were a little lad. At the I was time. I was but what were we saying? A lad. little mister. A little, a little, little mister. mister Micah. <laughs> 8888 ask Leo is the phone number. Micah, say hi to Micah. Oh, it's Micah from Maine. Hello, Micah from Maine. Hey, it's my other favorite Micah. I get to talk to both Micah and Leo. What How many Micahs, deal? Micah, do you... No, this is going to be confusing. How often do you meet another person named Micah? I have met two or three. Yeah. Uh, there, it's a lot more popular these days with, with, with younger people because it's also a name that is now used for men or women. So well, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, although Micah and I spell it differently, but we have the same attitude. We like people. That was because of, of a mistake on the factory floor. That's it why Micah was spells it wrong. A mistake that uh, ended up becoming canon, as they say. <laughs> yeah. the, my mom said, Micah, like the Bible, and the nurse wrote a K instead of a C, and my mom said, that's unique. I like it. Let's keep it. I actually like it, too. Me, too. Yeah. I, I like it. It's different. Micah with a C, not Micah with a K, because Micah with a K would be Micah. <laughs> Micah with a C... <laughs> What can we do for you today? Well, I was calling for two reasons. One is I wanted to reiterate what Scott said about the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. I recently got one, and it has made such a difference uh, with my microphone level. I'm using my ATR mic, but instead of going USB in, I can use the XLR plug, and I know I'm talking gibberish to a lot of people, but basically I can use an analog in to get a much better uh, digital output through the Focusrite and... My levels are much higher. I get much more gain out of it once you find the mysterious mysterious settings in Windows 10. But it really makes a huge difference. We send this out to uh, our hosts, actually. We like it so much. And the other thing I like about the Scarlet is, in fact, Scarlet Red. It's a, it's a nice it's really pretty. piece of kit. Uh, musicians like it, too, because they can hook up their guitars or whatever. And so it has some uh, nice advantages. The Scarlet 2 And the other great two. thing is for... For radio guys like you and me, it has a headphone pass-through, so you can hear yourself in the headphones when you're talking to someone, which, you know, as radio guys, that's what we like. We like to be able to know that we're actually talking to ourselves. This is a common problem when you use uh, microphones 
into your computer, if you monitor via the computer, there'll be a little bit of lag, and that can be very disconcerting. It sounds like you're Lou Gehrig in the Yankee Stadium. So it's nice to have the microphone and headphones come out of the same unit so that they match. You don't get that little bit of a, a lag here. Yeah, this is a this is a nice device. How much does it cost? It's a couple. It's not inexpensive. I think it's a. It's about one hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. It's really not bad for yeah. what it is because you're getting a digital input and output. Right. Right. So I think it's a great, and it plugs right in. Good. Don't need any drivers, nothing. It's right there. Boom, it's working. Yeah, yeah. Just a couple of mysterious settings in the two control panels of Windows 10. <laughs> you got to go into the secondary one to get it right. But, uh, it's but well it made, too. Nice fine. aluminum case. and the, Yeah, it's, it's a nicely made device. Anyway, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a using... specialized thing. Not everybody needs a, a way to get a microphone into a computer yeah, or audio. But here's app. something that, that might interest their listeners a little bit more. I'm going to be using it in a very special way when I record on Monday night with the Airplane Geeks podcast. We have an amazing guest coming on. Who's coming on the Airplane Geeks podcast on Monday night? Might none I ask? Than Johnny, none other than Johnny Jet. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good choice. Yeah, because of, of you, and thank you very much. You know, Johnny and I managed to uh, get to know one another after he unblocked me from Twitter, which we did. was a total mistake. It was really very funny. But, you know, I've written a couple of articles for him in, in, uh, on, on the website. He likes my writing, and uh, eventually we were able to work it out. So we're going to record with him on Monday night, and the podcast should be out on Wednesday if those want to hear a little bit more from Johnny Jet, because we'll be spending be able to spend a little more time with him than, than, than you can on your show. I know. I always wish I had more time with Johnny. With Johnny, but he's coming up, by the way, in just a little bit. If you can't wait till Monday, but good. So you're going to ask him his uh, ask him about his original name. Johnny Jet is actually sh a, sh a kind of shortened version of his real original name. So you ask him about that, and that'll get you a story right there. Just, well, I can't wait to do just that. Just giving a little can't tip. Wait to do that. How do we hear the Airplane Geeks podcast? Well, it's on any podcast catcher that you happen to use, but you can always go to airplanegeeks.com. And if you want to know all about it, there's a little about segment that tells all the, tells you about all the hosts, and, nice. including me. And uh, i tell you, we've been in business and doing this since 2008, so that's not bad. Johnny's going to be on episode 706, but the next episode is going to be very, very special. 707, and you know, 707. Oh, the Boeing cast. Airplanes. Nice. Yep. Thank you, Micah. Leo Laporte, Thank Micah you. Sargent, your tech guys. That's a good story. So what are you going to do on 707? Well, we, uh, you know, tentatively, we, you know, we're never sure if a guest is going to show up, but we have somebody from the uh, the Ronald Reagan Library who's an oh. expert on the original Air Force One, which was oh. a 707. Oh, cool. I've written a yeah, I've written a special piece that I need to record yet using my focus right uh, on on the 707, a little bit of history of it and my experience with it and uh it's going to be all hands on deck celebrating. You know, usually podcasts will celebrate episode 200 or 500 or 700. 707's we better. said yeah. we, just did, we just did 700 and let it go and we're going to celebrate 707 cuz it's a special episode. I don't know if I've ever flown in a 707. Did um, is did PSA when they were flying California routes they might have used a 707. I really don't know if PSA did. My, I would guess not. It's probably a 737, they, huh? Or 27. 737s and 727s. Yeah. You know, and they were retired right around the same time that the 7-4 came out. At that point, they were getting old. They stopped flying in the uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Uh, it didn't it didn't last quite as long as the DC-8, which uh, lasted oh, until Oh, God. The I flew in a lot of DC-8s and mostly DC-10s. A lot of yeah. 737, 727, and DC-10s, but I don't remember. I must have flown in a 707. I mean, I started flying back and forth to the East Coast in the late 70s. So, Oh, then I'm sure you did. Yeah. I'm sure you did. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be. A, it should be a fun show, and uh, and the show with Johnny is going to be great. I'm just really. Oh, I'm so glad. To, thank you uh, for calling and uh, giving him a plug. Well, thank you for letting me plug it. Of and course, you have a Micah. Day. Tell Johnny. Tell Johnny I said hi. He uh, he hears you right now. He's right there. He says hello. Hi. He says hi back. <laughs> hey there. Looking forward to talking to you directly on Monday. You too. All right, guys. All right. Take care. Take care. Hello, Johnny. How you doing? What's up? You still in Toronto? I sure am. Yeah. Although I went to Niagara Falls this week. <gasps> Niagara Falls. You might just Slowly I turn. Went across inch the border. By inch. Yes. <laughs> you just hop across the border. It's practically right there. 
No, it's an hour and a half drive from oh, Toronto. It's, it's, it's close no to Montreal. That's border. right. Yeah, it's close to Montreal. No, 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 no. no. We're not close to Montreal. No, but Niagara Falls is closer to Montreal, isn't it? I don't no, know. No. I should look but at a Niagara map Niagara Falls someday. is right. Is, is right next to Buffalo. Uh, so Toronto is directly above Buffalo. Yes. An hour and a half. Because you're Niagara actually Falls on the same is, lake, Lake Ontario. Yes, and also it goes into Lake Erie. And Erie, yeah. I mean, it goes. To, it comes from Lake Erie to. The, it goes actually starts from Lake Superior and goes all around. But anyway. Um. Yeah, it's beautiful. I have never been, believe it or not. Lisa wants to go there. Uh, you, well, you definitely want to do it on the Canadian side. I mean, you know, I'm American. I love America, but it's so much. As as my tour guide said, um, America chose industry when they started, and these guys chose tourism. So they built it up, ah, and they have much nicer hotels, better ah, restaurants, and, uh, amusements. So, but try check them both out. But going across the border these days is a breeze. Really. Yeah, I mean, except you got to fill out that RiveCan app to get back into Canada, and you got to pay a four dollar U.S. toll. But uh, other than deal. that, it's big deal. I used to have a hell of a time getting into Canada, <laughs> and I used to go once a month. I was gonna say, didn't you have to go regularly? Yeah, I finally had my my passport was stuffed with these uh, credentials that would allow me to come and go a little bit easier. What did you ever get the Nexus Pass? Um, no, it's like global think, entry. Yeah, no, I know what Nexus is. I think I never, for some reason, I never did. Maybe they. I so that's know. what. We, that's why we went to. That um, makes it easy. Yeah. That's why we crossed the border for my right. renewal and to get my daughter her, her Nexus and global entry. Right. Right. Because everyone in your party has to have it. So now oh. we all do. What'd you say, Johnny? What'd you say? Listen, listen, I said, listen. In this here land, he's been everywhere, man. He's in Toronto, breathing the Canadian air right now. Johnny Jett, our traveling guy. He's hitting the road again. Hey, Johnny. Hello, Leo. Travel hey, better with tech. Hello, hello. You, uh, you told us, but I, but I, I didn't realize you told us last week was one of the biggest travel uh, weekends of the year, which is wild. Well, I yesterday was the most um, people going through security checkpoints in the U.S. since March 2020. Over wow. four point, over no, 2.45 uh, million. So this so, weekend topped last weekend. Wow. It is, but we're still almost 250 or 300,000 shy of 2019. But the thing is, the reason why all this travel chaos is going on, and I see people in the chat room asking me about it. Oh, yeah. In fact, it, I'm, t I'm terrified because Monday I'm flying to Rhode Island, actually Boston, with my daughter, and I'm scared to death because of all everybody saying all oh, flights are canceled and they don't have enough equipment, they don't have enough pilots. What's going on? Well, they're not all canceled, but the problem is, is that the, the, they weren't expecting the demand demand to be back so quickly, and they're short pilots and staff. I mean, everyone's every industry is having a difficult time finding staff. But I was listening to an interview this week of Willie Walsh, who used to be the head of British Airways and now the IATA. And he said, listen, the, one of the big problems is that everyone's gotten used to this flexible work week from work from home, you know, make your own hours. You know, you can't do that in the travel industry. Pilots have to fly planes, baggage loaders have to load the, the um, handlers have to load the bags. And so they're having a difficult time finding people to work. And this is happening all over the world. It's not just an American thing. It's happening here in Canada. It's happening in Europe. It's happening in Australia. So uh, you just have to buckle up. I thought it was going to last. I, I think it's going to get much better when September comes around because, you know, the kids will be back in school. There'll be less people traveling and not as many business travelers as usual. But Lufthansa came out today saying that they expect it to last all year, Aye. which is shocking. Aye. But that's for them. That's for them. But, I, you know, I did write a really good guide. I spent a lot of time this week writing a survival guide. And, you know, if you follow those tips, I honestly think you will have no problem. I'll give you some of them real quick. I said, you know, I said postpone if you can until mid-September. Oh, can't, great. No. <laughs> travel midweek. Take an early flight. Download the right apps, especially the airline that you're flying. Um, you know, and just keep checking your itinerary, making sure they didn't change the plane, change the route, change your seat. 
avoid connections if you can, you know, and, and avoid the long lines by getting, you know, TSA pre clear. Not every airport has it. So you have to do your research and find out if they do. Uh, I, I'm here and I went down to uh, Niagara this week because I went and had a Nexus appointment, which is um, it costs $50 for five years and it gets me global entry and TSA pre check. I also got it for my daughter. So now my whole family has it. Yeah, that's one so of my that, worries. That, I have global entry, but but my daughter who I'm traveling with does not. So I won't but be able to go. you're not going out of the country, though. No. So does it? Does it, but I mean, doesn't it give you TSA pre-check and stuff? Or it does. But you know what? She might be if you're on the same itinerary. If, she, if you're are. on the same reservation, she sometimes might get they that give it to TSA pre on the ticket thing. If and not, I also, you same cruise thing. through. I have, and I have clear, but she doesn't either. So yeah. well, that doesn't matter. Oh, you know, it does matter because she's she's older uh, older than she's 18. an adult. Yeah. Yes, my kids are you know young, so yeah. they they go with me. But clear. Get, you want to you want to shock? Because I remember when my kids were your kids' age. She's now thirty. She's, no, she's thirty. She's going with me. She's in a. I guess that's a grown up now. She's older than Micah for crying out she loud. Is. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I remember when she was man in the phones when I went in one day. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. Um, anyway, there's all different things. I. I, I I'll I'll put the uh, post in the chat room. I'll tweet it out. Hopefully, you'll sign up to my free newsletter. But also track your bags. Uh, you know, and try not to check a bag. Well, we're gonna try I not think, to check a bag. I, I know I'm gonna tell her please carry on, and I'm gonna do a carry on. And hope we can do that. Would be that, that would will, save time. That will save you time. Yeah. On on both ends, it will save you hassles. Yeah. I'm sure you saw the images from Heathrow this week. It was literally a mountain of bags. So everyone is now using Apple tags or Samsung's. Um, I got an AirTag in my bag. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. So put throw them in your bag, track it, and always carry your valuables on the plane, your medications, a change of clothes, and bring a bathing suit if you're going somewhere <laughs> so warm. So what I carry in <laughs> is a drone, a camera, <laughs> a laptop, an iPad. Forget medications. <laughs> I've got my Always tech bring gear. medications. Yeah. If you have them. Yeah. And you know, and have a backup plan and just and leave a day or two early because you know what? Things happen. And uh um, have one. a backup plan. I, I didn't even think of reserve your airport park parking now. That's, Definitely. That's I a mean, good if idea. If you're gonna park at the airport, yeah. More people are more people are parking at the airport than they ever have because they don't want to be in a car with another driver or they don't want to take public transportation because they're worried about covid so Good you got to reserve it in advance especially during a big weekends and crunch time so like fridays and so sundays and mondays you want to avoid those we days. rented a car is the is the car rental shortage over because that was a problem no, a while not ago. over it's not no but it all depends on the market so uh, you know i rented a car a few weeks ago and the guy's like yeah i asked him that question he said you know it all depends on the market um so we rented so a car in boston because i have to drive to providence that's where my mom is uh but i rented it through hertz i'm hertz gold i'm, I'm gonna, sorry about that what <laughs> well hertz has been it all over the news because what oh, you know no. they, they've been people have been getting arrested driving hertz what i mean they, they said they've now fixed it but there's been a, Dozens of people who've been arrested because ridiculous reasons. You got to do your research. We don't have enough time. But what you know, pe people either. Okay, uh, Micah, if I'm not back next yeah. week, you'll know why. Know. You got arrested. Well, listen, I'm, the chance I'm, of that I'm in the are, Boston are, jail. This is the thing where they uh, they thought that people the were car stealing was stolen. The car. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and they actually threw people in jail for. I think one guy was in jail for a couple nights. That's He's like, awful. "What are you talking about?" Anyway, Hertz is, is actually. I a hope huge PR I get hit. thrown in jail for two nights because I will sue, sue. the pants mm -hmm. off of them. Yeah, Definitely. I will make so much money <laughs> that it will be I, I worth agree it. With that. Yeah, yeah. But listen, I don't want to scare people with Hertz because the chances of that happening are. I know yeah. Bill Handel. I can get some legal <laughs> advice here, so I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, but also I'm it's flying. Getting, so you just can't steal a car anymore. I have to God, say, can you, you believe know, it? terrible, what terrible kind of world. Is this? So uh, I just at least hope that they have my reservation. Of course, you've seen the Seinfeld bit yes. where he gets to the car counter and he has a reservation, but they have no cars. And he says, well, you know how to take the reservation. You just don't know how to keep the reservation. I had a friend who worked yeah. on, uh, for rental cars and that's what they do. They overbook because people cancel last minute. They yeah, do same that. with the airlines. Like the airlines typical. do the same thing. Mm. They book about usually ten percent or ten, ten percent more because they, a lot of people don't show up. And then when they do, that's when you can try and get some good money. Can you say things bump. like, 
my mother's 88 years old. This is maybe the last time I'll ever get to see her. Well, so that's why you need to check in 24 hours in advance, <laughs> like, check in early. You got no heart, Mr. Johnny <laughs> Jet. No heart at oh, all. Oh, listen, I got big heart. My dad's 93. <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. But you know. the gate agents, you know, if you book direct too, you want to book direct. If you're a freaking flyer, they're not going to bump you. So I but, bought um, a uh, carbon dioxide. Oh, yeah detector okay. that I'm going to carry on the plane. We talked about this last week. Some, right. uh, J Thank you, John Dishauer, one of our listeners, sent me a great uh, article, I think from Science Magazine. They tested uh, th with the FAA and uh, the help of the FAA, I think several hundred flights. Airplanes tend to be pretty high, like around between 1,500 and 2,000 parts per million CO2. That's enough to make you drowsy. It's not a uh, you know, violation of the OSHA limit, which is 5,000 parts per minute. After that, you die. So I guess the airplane, the airlines don't want to kill passengers. Is it because of the altitude or the... Um, I thought about this and I read it and energy? I think what it is is, yeah, they don't mix in fresh air. As you know, they mix in as little as possible as they're doing the filtration because it uses energy. They have to heat it and they have to pump it in and it slows them down. So they just put a little bit of fresh air in. That's why the carbon dioxide levels get high. The good news is they are HEPA filtering. So right. as long as you're in the air, I don't, I'm not too worried about COVID, but they pointed out carbon dioxide levels are much higher when you're boarding. There's no filtration then. So keep, I'm keeping my mask on. Johnny Jet, johnnyjet.com. I'll see you and tell you all about it next week. How long are you going to stay in Toronto now? forever stay there yeah. <laughs> don't come back do not come back to the u.s you know after watching the news yesterday don't I'm like, come Man. back stay there uh, uh, by the way did you see i was going to mention did you see crystals ships a couple of them got sold actually they had three ships ships sorry i, I saw two got sold and the one newest ship the biggest ship of all yes is going to be scrapped. It's brand new, never sailed. No, no, are they? No, I thought they. Um, the Crystal Endeavor. They're not going to scrap. No, that. it's not a crystal. No, but Silver the... Sea bought that. Silver Sea. Oh, bought good, crystal good. Endeavor. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silver no, no. Sea's doing all right, which because that's my you're preferred. Talking, you're, you're talking about NCL. NCL. They're, they're, they're... Yeah, but that's the owner of, oddly enough, Silver Sea, um, or part owner anyway. So they bought the Endeavor. Nice. That was is Silver that, Sea, but the old, their old that and that NCL ship is, brand new. is a part owner of Silver Sea. Okay. Uh, oh, it's Serenity. a nice little boat. Look at this. It's not even a big boat. Yeah, no, they're going to use that for Antarctica. Oh, it's excursion. an expedition boat. Ooh. Yes. Oh and no, Crystal I'm sorry. Serenity. Silver Sea is RCL. Okay. It's Royal Caribbean Group. I thought it was NCL. Yeah. All right. Okay. I, I didn't think so. No, you're right. No, I didn't say anything, but I, um, but I, I do know tell that Crystal was... Serenity and Crystal Symphony, that are older ships, have just been bought by um, A and K, which is the uh, world's Abercrombie largest Kent. cruise ship, which is being built by a Chinese cruise line, is being sold for scrap, even though it's never sailed with passengers. That's insane, right? Is that insane? Insane. But talk about insane! I think it said they they were it was close to ten thousand passengers. That's ridiculous. Ten thousand passengers. So that passengers. So there's like six thousand crew. It's a city. Let me see if I can find this uh, story because it's uh, it's a wild story. Uh, yeah, world's biggest cruise ship sent to scrapyard before ever setting sail. Nine thousand passenger vessel, uh, bigger than the any of the you know wonders of the seas or you know any of the RCL ships. Twenty decks. The Global Dream Two. Outdoor water park, plush cinema, never left the dock. Uh, a buyer is yet to be found. Of course not, because no one wants a ship that big. Right. I, Global I Dream ship that is trying to sell their first ship, but it's not, so they haven't sold it yet. It's a German shipyard. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, put the link in the show notes, because it's crazy. 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 Is crazy. Right. The Global Dream 2. Crazy. <laughs> It's a lot of steel. Oh, yeah. And there's Johnny Jet's article, which everybody must have. I'm going to follow it to the letter. Yeah, I think it'll help. I mean, I'm traveling soon, and I'll... Um, 
uh, you know, I, I have friends that are d doing these, and it's all working. So, so we got two trips coming. Anyway, I'm going to bring that carbon uh, dioxide monitor with me. But, uh, but I take a I'm, photo, please. Take a good. I will. Photo. I will. I'll be somewhat relieved. I'm somewhat relieved to read. In fact, I will put this, a link in the show notes to this um, article too, because. Honestly, and put I'm a link to, to the actual one that you're the study. Because oh yeah, I'm up, bringing the Aranet the Aranet two A R A N E T carbon monoxide, and that's what I no no I'm not carbon, carbon monoxide. monoxide. There should I know, if but there's when you type any in carbon dioxide. Yeah, no, it's CO two. It's the A R A N E T four. I'll put a link in the show notes. It's a CO two monitor. It was two hundred fifty bucks. It's cute. It's got a little. Uh, it's got a little. Um, e-ink screen, which means it doesn't use much battery. Tells you the relative humidity and the temperature as well. So I'll take pictures as I go. But what, I, I, what this study found, which I thought was quite interesting, was that uh, it's the boarding that really is bad for CO2. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. That makes Wear your sense. mask. I mean, that's, ignorance is bliss sometimes, and I think... I agree. All right, All right. Johnny. Have a good take one. Care. Bye. See you around. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent. You got two tech guys this week on the Tech Guy show yeah so this was an interesting uh, conversation we had last week with johnny jet i should probably go into more detail about this about carbon dioxide mm -hmm. so that's what we breathe out not monoxide which is poisonous that's caused by combustion you, you have a carbon monoxide detector in your home you ought to if you don't because furnaces and anything that has combustion it generates carbon monoxide and and that's poisonous and will kill you mm -hmm. Uh, it's odorless. You can't tell. You need a detector, so you should have that. But carbon dioxide is everywhere. It's what we breathe out. Uh, and the normal exposure to carbon dioxide, if you're outside, is several hundred parts per million. You know, in my house, I've, I bought this carbon mo uh, dioxide uh, detector f for going on airplanes. And it's, uh, it's usually around 400 parts per million as, as I go around the house. That's good. That's fresh air. It's fine. Uh, the reason you want to be concerned about this, well, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, says in a, in a workplace environment should never exceed 5,000 parts per million because, well, you'd probably die. <laughs> it's like there's not <laughs> enough air. Right. Uh, you, you, you might pass out. It's pretty bad. But that's for, that's for you know, you're working in a, you know, a steel mill or something. Uh, a lot of offices, though, can get to two or 3,000 because, like this office, it's sealed. There's no windows you can throw open. Uh, this study says uh, they did some cognitive studies on people with uh, in, in environments with a lot of carbon dioxide. And after about uh, 1,500 parts per million, you get groggy. Your, your cognitive um, abilities go down about 50%. It's not you're not you're not ill. It's not going to kill you, but you're you know you, and you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if the airlines go yeah that's not a bad thing, you know right because chill, uh, chill people out chill people are <laughs> sleepy is a good thing. It's not going to hurt you. The reason I was interested in this and I saw a number of tweets about it a couple of weeks ago and that's why I got this uh, Aeronet for carbon dioxide. Well, I say die very carefully dioxide detectors because uh, people said well it's a proxy. For poor ventilation, and as we know with COVID, poor ventilation is the number one problem because COVID is airborne. And if you don't get lots of fresh air, that's why you are supposed to wear a mask with big crowds indoors. But it's not as necessary outdoors. You get more fresh air. So I thought, oh, well, these high carbon dioxide levels in an airplane, that doesn't sound so good. But after reading this and thinking about it, uh, and I'll put a link in the show notes to this, uh, this paper uh, onboard carbon dioxide con concentrations and ventilation performance in passenger cabins of U.S. domestic flights, a study uh, done specifically on airplanes with funding from the uh, Federal Aviation Administration. This is in 2018, but I think it's, it's modern enough that this is still appropriate. Uh, with airplanes, it isn't a good proxy for poor ventilation. They are, in fact recirculating the air every few minutes through HEPA filters. So any viruses in the air are getting filtered out. So it doesn't mean even with the higher carbon dioxide levels that you're not, that it's not safe. It just means you might be a little sleepy. And that's because for eco economy reasons, they don't want to mix in too much outside air. It's very cold. They have to heat it. Uh, it slows the plane down. So, you know, they're careful uh, about that. 
So uh, just for econ economical reasons. If they gave everybody a plant whenever they came a plant plane, would be a good be thing. Good? Yeah, you a could plant. Out the oxygen. Yeah. Um, it, many say you don't really want to have carbon dioxide concentrations over 700 parts per million. A lot of office buildings are much higher than that. Uh, by the way, uh, it also says uh, CO, uh, 700 parts per million by volume above CO2 levels outdoors. That, if that's in a typical office building, it's an indicator that visitors entering, this, entering the space will be satisfied with respect to human bioeffluence. What does bioeffluence mean? B.O. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> it's gonna be a little stinky if it's uh, if it's above seven hundred. Okay, that's why they another reason to filter uh, that air. Other studies found the exposure to CO two at concentrations between nine hundred fifty and twenty five hundred parts per million is associated with decreased human cognitive functions. You get you get sleepy. You get slowed down. You 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 know you're just not thinking as well. So anyway, I'm going to bring this on the plane, but I will be now aware of the fact that it's not so much a, a COVID exposure problem because they do filter with HEPA filters. But, you know, you might be why you're a little cranky or sleepy. <laughs> He's a little cranky. It's time for his nap. People say that to me all the time. I don't know why. They say he's a little cranky. He needs to eat something. That's, what That's another one. Hangry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Anyway, they did say in this study, which again was funded by the FAA among others, that uh, the worst time is when you're boarding. People are, you know, exerting themselves. They're breathing out a lot more CO2. The uh, air cabin recirculation isn't happening yet. There's only a little air coming in through the door. That's why it feels so stuffy at the beginning. That's why it's so bad. Oh, that's why it's so bad. They also uh, address, although I'm not sure what the conclusions are, this notion of turning the vent on above you to create a bubble of air around you. I don't know. The problem is that air coming out of that vent still has the same amount of CO2 because they're not actually adding fresh air to it. Yeah, if you look at the graph, during boarding and ascent, CO2 got as high as almost 1,900 parts per million. Went back down about 1,300 during the cruise on average and then deplaning back up to 1,800 parts per million. So it is a little, you know, you feel a little stuffy. Yeah, that's why. Uh, and by the way, because they're not filtering it, that's also your greatest COVID uh, exposure. So I'll be wearing a mask, you know. And by the way, I, 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 people always say to me, well, you're, I get this all the time. You're vaccinated, you shouldn't wear a mask. So what if you get sick? A, <laughs> I'm an old guy. I don't think it's a good idea. A million people have died in the United States, more than, uh, from from COVID-19. I don't want to be one of them, even uh, though I am vaccinated and boosted. But also, I'm going to visit my 88-year-old mother, mm -hmm. and I definitely don't want to get her sick. And long COVID is actually affecting more adults than we thought originally. They said like 30%. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever long COVID is, I, I, it doesn't sound good. No. I don't want it. Like, why choose to risk yourself getting sick? Yeah, I don't want doing it. what you can to not I don't, I don't want it. So uh, that's why I wear a mask. And it's an easy thing to do. Yeah. You know? It's very easy. I like my masks. They make me look like Donald Duck. And I think, actually, these are uh, Kimberly Clark N95 masks that have a bill because they don't, that way they don't touch your mouth or you, mm -hmm. you kind of have some space in there. You move around and I thought maybe I'd put a little uh, painted orange and put a little, uh, little that might nostrils change the filtration. on there. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> maybe nostrils. Man, the okay. CO2 level in this mask is <laughs> woo! You're just sealed in. Woo! No, low CO2 does not cause COVID. But low CO2 is a proxy for poor ventilation, and poor ventilation absolutely is a problem if there's COVID in the environment. Well, I want to make that clear. Right, you know what? This is complicated, but I will put this article. Uh, I think it was, I thought, you know, thank you, John, for sending me this uh, from the August 2018 issue of Indoor and Built Environment, which is a magazine. Hmm. Uh, it's co-authored by uh, somebody from the U.S. Department of Transportation and uh, partially funded by the Federal Aviation Administration. So I think it's I think it's reliable. I'm just saying they're probably wondering why they're getting so many hits <laughs> <laughs> on this on this paper. We put this paper out four years ago. What's going on? Well, it's because of Twitter. Blame Twitter and all those people tweeting pictures of their carbon dioxide monitors. And I'm going to add to that. 
<laughs> doing the same. I'll I'll send you some images. Johnny yeah, said, send, like me, send me the send me the information. I'd like to know. 8888 Ask Leo. We say uh, we'll put links in the show notes. Maybe we aren't very clear about where that is. It's uh, on the web, techguylabs.com. It's free, open to all, no charge for going to techguylabs.com. No subscription. Uh, I'll tell you what's there. You'll find a, a kind of a list of links, the things we've mentioned. Underneath that, in a couple of days, a transcript of the show, audio and video of the show. This is episode 1905. That's the one you should look for. 1905 at techguylabs.com. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Micah Sargent there, the tech guy. Together, we are the two tech guys, <laughs> which means double your money, double your fun. Like double mint gum. Like double mint gum. 888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, outside that area. You can still call, but it'd have to be uh, using Skype out or something like that to uh, reach us. 8888 ask. Leo, should we go back to the phones, Micah? Let's do it. I, I gassed the whole last segment, so I won't do that uh, this time. I apologize in advance to Kenny, who's been very patiently waiting from Cottontown, Tennessee. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Leo. Hello, Micah. Hello, Kenny. Welcome to the show, Kenny. Well, I just wanted to call and let you know that this week I finally got my Mac Studio that I ordered all the way back in April Fool's Day. Yay! Wow. Boy, that took a long Yay. time. April, May, June. You four and a half, it, two, two and a half months. Almost three months. Wow. Yes, I did. Now, when did you get it? Today? No, I got it on Wednesday. And you, so it's plugged in? Did you set it all up? Oh, yeah, I set it all up. It's all ready to go and it's running pretty good i mean there are some applications that are having a hard time loading than others because oh. i guess just that the structure of it is a little different and they obviously haven't had it a lot of the applications i have haven't had up time to update to the m1 chip which of course yeah so they're going to run the M2 chip but yeah they're going to run an emulation mode something um, apple calls rosetta 2 which lets uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Intel stuff run, and actually Rosetta works pretty well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah ideally you'll everybody will update to uh, compatibility with Apple Silicon, and that'll be a lot better. The other issue, of course, is and this started with Catalina. You can't run 32-bit apps at all, so those there might be mm -hmm. a few apps that you just can't run on that new computer. Otherwise, you know, is it? It's nice and quiet, right? <laughs> It sure is. It sure yeah. is. Um, the only complication I've had so far, and it's because I use uh, Parallels Desktop for Windows, oh. is that because of the type of operating system that I had, I had it constructed when I still had an Intel Mac. Right. Uh, they gave me a little pop-up message saying that it will not be compatible with the transition over to the Apple Silicon chips. So... I still, good thing is I still have all the applications saved from Windows 10. I just moved on to Windows 11, and I, I like Windows 11 to some degree. I just wish they had a full-screen start menu. Other than that, it runs okay. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? But you're not running Windows 11 on the Mac Studio, or are you? Yes, I am. Okay, so you're running it in Parallels using Windows on ARM, this, the pre-release version of Windows yeah, for ARM. that's right. Yeah, and this is an interesting conversation because Parallels, when the M1 processor came out more than a year ago, said, we, and we are going to do a deal with Microsoft and you're going to be able to run Windows in Parallels and Windows on ARM, but Microsoft has never approved that. It's always been a beta version of Windows on ARM. They And there's some question about why. The thinking seems to be that Microsoft has an exclusivity deal with Qualcomm, that Windows on ARM can only run officially on a Qualcomm processor, not any other ARM-compatible processor like the Apple Silicon chips. That deal was supposedly, you know, it, we don't know, but we thought it might be running out last year. I think it still hasn't. We just had this conversation on the Windows Weekly podcast because... 
there are a lot of Mac users who have some Windows apps they want to run on their new M1 based Macs. Um, and yeah, you have to do it in this kind of beta way, but it runs okay, right? Yes, it runs okay. Uh, the only thing is I'll have to get an activation license for Windows 11 copy that I have. But other than that, it runs pretty good. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get one because, again, Microsoft's not making this official. You have to run the beta version of Windows on ARM. And uh, I don't, I think, I, yeah, this is an interesting question is when is Microsoft going to relent and make an official version of Windows on ARM run on Parallels on a Mac Studio. And I don't know when that's going to happen. And it's not clear why Microsoft's not doing that. So uh, the good news is it, it works well in beta. Uh, you can do, you know, what, what apps do you need? Well, I mean, all the apps that I have is running pretty good, particularly Office, because I made the decision to go back to college. And oh, good for I needed you. That. I needed Nice. Well, thank you. What are you studying, Kenny? And I did... I am studying right now uh, business science on uh, supply chain, uh, transportation, and logistics management up at Bellevue University out of Bellevue, Nebraska. Congratulations. That's great. Yeah, it's going to take me two years to finish the degree, but hopefully it'll be all worth it. Oh, it will. I, I think anything you put in, invest like that into yourself is absolutely going to pay off. That's, that's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I want to also kind of go back to an episode that you did about, I guess it's been, well, two months ago. Uh, I remember you had a spill over YouTube TV and wilkes -Barre, Pennsylvania, and the location in regards to that. Were you using a VPN when you were having these issues? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's what happened. So uh, this is an interesting story. And I had to actually cancel my YouTube TV account and start over. And that's what the, uh, the rep, this customer service rep said to do. So at some point, YouTube TV decided that my home, when I signed up, my home location was here, San Francisco Bay Area. I got the locals from San Francisco Bay Area. You're allowed a certain amount of travel. You can't spend too long in another location or they're going to say, oh, you've moved. So somehow mm -hmm. at some point, and I be, it was here at work, I turned it on and it, it decided I wasn't in San Francisco Bay Area, but I was in Pennsylvania. And it, just, and it and I guess I was there long enough that it moved my home location. And then it said, you've moved it too many times. You can't go back to the San Francisco Bay Area, which made me laugh because I've never been to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so uh, I called them and they said, yeah, I can't reset your home location. You just have to cancel your account, create a new account. He did good news. Google gave me credit. Uh, for the because I've been paying extra because I wanted 4K and all that, they did give me credit for everything I'd paid and 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 the month I couldn't use it, uh, and I didn't lose any recordings because I made it the new account quickly enough the recordings transferred over, so that was all good news. And in fact, uh, I'm back now in the San Francisco Bay Area, but I was puzzled and maybe it is something about location services here at work. I mean, the office is not in Wilkes Barre, but maybe it was a VPN or something like that we have a lot of you know security software as you might imagine running here so i'm not sure what our location looked like to youtube well, tv to tell you a real uh, real quick story um you remember this was probably back in i guess week 11 or week 12 in the nfl season when a lot of games had to be moved to tuesday nights and i think you kind of know where i'm going with this uh two games were moved one involved the now commanders eagles the other the Rams, seahawks and so what I did is I used ExpressVPN. Sure, as one does. Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was able to do that. Now, the trick was I clicked on it, and it says the program's currently unavailable to watch. Please try again later. So they kind of... They kind of knew where my location was, and so what I did is I used my browser, and I zoomed in. I didn't get to hear the audio of it, which was fine because it wasn't the A squad. It was the C squad team calling yes, the game, so I right. just figured, well, I'll just watch the game. I'll listen there. to my local uh, announcers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was doing there. Yeah. And I figured that that's probably what it is if you're using it on a browser. Uh, even if you can spoof the location uh, with a VPN, uh, it's not as quite as sophisticated enough to where it can detect, oh, this guy's actually in that location. And like you said, 
I even tried it out just today in Express VPN is what I'm using for Dallas, but then it sent me all the way to Austin, Texas of all places. Right, right. It's where they have yeah, servers, so but geolocation via IP address is a very inexact science. I don't think we were using anything that pinpointed us in Wilkes-Barre, PA, but something must have because YouTube TV decided that's where I lived. Uh, and it was a bit of a hassle, and uh, and it turned out it was NFL football. In fact, I wanted to watch our 49ers at work <laughs> that got me in all this trouble. <laughs> so the moral is, kids, don't watch football at work, right? Well, maybe that's, maybe that's not the <laughs> yep. moral. Kenny, hey, I'm really happy to hear about your, uh, your work in business uh, school, and uh, that's great. Congratulations. Have a great time, and it's great to hear a report on your new Mac Studio. Do you love it? Oh, I love it, and um, I just wish it'd come a month sooner when I actually did start courses, but <laughs> I'm glad I have it now, and exactly. I'm up and running. I love my Mac Studio. I, You know, I'm a good husband. I gave my wife the fancy one, the M1 Ultra, and I got the M1 Pro, or Max, I guess it is, just the middle of the line, but that's fine with me. What'd you get, the Max? Uh, yeah, I actually did get the ML1 Ultra. Oh, Ultra. I'm so jealous. The location. Oh, you are sick. Uh, yeah, 20 core CPU, 64 core Ow. GPU, 32 Ow. core. And yes, I paid a big penny for it, but it was well worth it. And that's why you waited eight, uh, eight to 10 weeks for it, because uh, it was a build to order. Hey, Kenny, a pleasure as exactly. always. Have fun. Yep, thank you, and go Dodgers. Shut up. <laughs> Bad man sneaking that. Actually, you know what? Our mothership is KFI in Los Angeles, so I probably shouldn't say anything about the Dodgers and the Giants. 8888, ask Leo the phone number. More of your calls coming up in just a little bit. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent. Do you, are you still ruin, ruin, rooting for the Cardinals or one of them? Back East teams. There's a, there's a place a in my bit. heart for the Cardinals because my great grandparents loved oh. them with their whole hearts. They would watch every Cardinals game. And of course, ever since uh, the famous sucker punch where Ozzy Smith sucker punched Will Clark in the 1989 playoffs, I've hated the Cardinals. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know that happened. <laughs> uh, I mean, Will Clark, sucker punch. Was it? It was. Was it Ozzy Smith? No, it was Ozzy Osbourne. Not yes. No, who was it? it was Ozzy? Who was the other Ozzy? The one who used to do cartwheels on the uh, on the base paths. Uh, oh, no, it was it? Was shilly. Ozzy Smith? Ozzy Smith, and the battle at Bush. Ooh. Ozzy Smith thought the Cardinals were being bullied, and he needed to show them how to stand up for themselves. Will Clark thought Smith was behaving like a bully by attacking him from behind. Clark Smith and Jose Oquendo were the principal figures in a memorable brawl during a Giants-Cardinals game at St. Louis, July 24th, 1988, before you were born... Nine months after the Cardinals defeated the Giants in a seven-game National League Championship Series. Another reason to hate them. <laughs> I remember that game very well. It was a bench-clearing brawl. And Ozzy comes up behind Will, and bam! The sucker punch heard round the world. In the eighth inning, Clark was on first base when Candy Maldonado hit a grounder to Smith at shortstop. Smith tossed the ball to Okendo at second base in time to get the force out on Clark. Attempting to prevent Okendo from completing a double play, Clark slid over the bag and toward Okendo. Clark called it an aggressive clean slide. Okendo thought Clark could have avoided contact. So, the fight. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. As Clark began to rise, Okendo slapped him in the head. <laughs> what? I couldn't understand what it was all about, Clark said. Then I just went off. Enraged, Clark got up and grabbed Okendo. Approaching from behind, Smith punched Clark in the head. It was a cheap shot, Clark said. He said, isn't it amazing? I still remember this from 19 freaking 88. Wow. I still hold a grudge against a the Cardinals. Punch? That's not good. From a sucker punch. Somebody, yeah. Yeah. Cardinals manager Whitey Herzog said any shortstop and second baseman would do the same thing. <laughs> oh, God. Smith took several more punches, connecting with at least a couple as Clark and Akendo grappled. 
Sometimes you got to, Will Ozzy Smith. Sometimes you got to stand up and be a man. <laughs> wow, wow. Clark said, "I thought Ozzy Smith had a little more class than to sucker punch somebody from behind. If you're going to whoop somebody, you might as well whoop them face to face." Wow, it's funny how those things. Mm -hmm. You know, the, of of such things are are uh, rivalries made, and ever since, most Giants fans have not liked the cards. Weirdly enough, weirdly enough, I have seen games at Bush Stadium. It's a kind of a cavern. <laughs> I have drunk a Budweiser at Bush Stadium. Did you ever go to a ball game there? I think so. Did you guys go into St. Louis at all? How far is so? You were in St. Joe Saint, or St. St. Joseph is all the way across yeah, the state. Yeah, so it's a from long St. drive. Louis, but yeah. um, but Midwesterners do drive a lot. Yes, we do. We have no problem with it. Yeah, um, that was one of the things I learned when I came here. Is that uh, everybody's much more like, wait, you're going to drive three hours? <laughs> yeah, that's and crazy. And they also think of it. They don't. They think of the whole trip. So what I see is a three hour trip. They think of it as a six hour trip because it's three hours there, three hours back. That's not how we think. It's like <laughs> you get there and then the resets so the clock and. And then you go back. Because uh, Patrick Norton, who's also from St. Louis area, uh, same thing. Yeah. You'll drive for hours. Yeah. The worst is uh, New Englanders. They uh, fly. <laughs> we thought going to Boston an hour away was like, oh, no, oh, can't wow. do that. It's too far. <laughs> All right. That's Jeremiah, our musical director. Spinning the discs. He looks good with half a headphone. You know, puts the other yeah, half right? in the air. With the ear, He's yeah. listening, <laughs> dancing the music. 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number. It's uh, Leo Laporte and Micah Sargent. And our next caller, Susan from Lake Los Angeles. Hello, Susan. Hi, Leo. I spoke to you previously about getting the right phone for my uh, computer phobic sister. Yes, I remember. Um, now, yeah. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> I um, I work from home. I'm in publishing, so I edit and typeset manuscripts. Oh, interesting! What do you, what it software is. do you use for that? InDesign. Uh, uh, yes, InDesign. Um, couldn't love it more. A yeah. few things, you know, could be better, but then what? doesn't have things that can it's, be better. It's become the dominant uh, program. You know, in the early days... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, in the early days, uh, Quark Express, even before that, what was the name of the, the first... Page Maker. Page Maker, Aldous Page Maker, yes. Frame Maker, we have guy, I yep. go back to the Frame Maker. Day. Yep, wow. So you've been doing this for yeah. a while. So yeah, InDesign is I a big improvement, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's a wonderful program. Good. It's wonderful. But... Um, Anyway, um, recently I've started uh, dog sitting for a friend, and I have a huge honking gaming monitor at home that I can see two pages on at once, and, you know, it's, it's really a bear to take with me when I go. So I'm thinking just for when I'm away from home, I need a laptop. <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> when I go online... Uh, I just can't tell what the best one is because all I need, of course, is internet and email. But um, basically, I just need to be editing and typesetting. Okay. So I, my needs are pretty small. But you need pay. You so, need uh, not page maker. <laughs> you you need InDesign I to work. Need, yeah. Okay. Gotta have gotta have InDesign, and I use Word for um, okay. you know for the editing. Both of those works on Mac or Windows. You're using a Windows PC. I'm I'm using the PC. Okay. So you want to know a good PC laptop? A good PC laptop that is not going to break the bank. Okay. Um, and my bank is. <clears throat> relatively small. All right. And you now the other thing you think about with the uh, laptops is the screen size. Uh, with page yeah, layout, exactly. I think you want 15 inches, but you tell me. Uh, the bigger the better. Yeah. They do make 17-inch laptops. They're awfully big and awfully heavy and they also get no battery life. So All right. Well, let's yeah, let's say 15. I'm going to say reasonably speaking 15 is 
is probably the right size for you. I'm sitting in front of, and I in a, I don't know how inexpensive it is, but uh, I do really like the Dell XPS 15. Uh, I just Dell bought. XPS 15. I just bought uh, the new one. One of the reasons I like it mm -hmm. is because it has the new Intel. 12th generation tip uh, chips, the Alder Lakes, and those have mm -hmm. some interesting features to give you better battery life uh, and better performance when you need it without a lot of fan, which is also uh, important on a laptop. Oh. They don't get so hot. Uh, and you can mm -hmm. save a little money with the new Alder Lakes by getting an i5 instead of an i7. Uh, research okay, seems to indicate, yeah. yeah. Research seems to indicate the i5 runs at least as well as the i7 because of those thermal issues. Intel chips, uh, all all x86 chips uh, get hot uh, on laptops. Okay. And you don't get a lot of cooling on laptops. But I, like I think this uh, 15 inch has been I very five? good. It's the i5 sorry, processor. Well, you'll be making a decision when you buy a laptop between uh, Intel and AMD as the manufacturer. AMDs tend to be a little bit less expensive. And then once you, once you're in the Intel uh, realm, you'll be choosing between an i3, 5, 7, and 9. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. honestly, with the new 12th generation Intels, I think the i5 is the exact sweet spot. Okay. Um, okay. Let me think about some others. Uh, Asus and Acer, A-S-U-S -S and A-C-E-R, tend to make less expensive... PC laptops that are nevertheless, I think, uh, very good. Um, what when you say low end, do you mean five hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars? Oh no, less than five hundred if possible. Well, now we got a problem. Yeah, and, oh, I'll, yeah. and I'll be honest with you, uh, I can tell you some, but you're making big sacrifices when you get that low. And often, I oh. think you've heard the phrase "penny wise, pound foolish." Uh, I think sometimes when you uh, get something really cheap and you end up having to buy a new one in six months or a year, have you really yeah. saved money, you know? Um, yeah. So, boy, less than $500 is, is really tough on a Windows PC. You could get a, a $500 okay. Chromebook, be quite good, but you wouldn't be able to run, unfortunately, InDesign on it. You could run Word on it, but it's not InDesign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Acer Acer is the only company that makes laptops anywhere near that price range, and they're they're pretty decent. They they've always kind of focused on being a low price leader. Yes, I had an Acer. Yeah, were you happy with it? Little, little teeny, yeah, I was, but it was a little teeny, teeny, tiny thing, and um, so uh, it kind of I, I I outgrew it pretty quickly. Yeah, and that's my my fear. Now, they will, Acer also offers uh, even less expensive laptops with the Qualcomm chip, but the performance on these is inadequate. So I would not... It's, okay. Yeah, you're not going to... It'll be so painful doing page layout that you'll just never use it. Again, penny-wise, okay. pound-foolish. But I would look at the an AMD-based Acer Aspire... Um, AMD. AMD is a little is going to be a little bit less expensive, a little less performant in the laptop, but they'll they'll save you some money. Those are about eight hundred bucks, so that's about as close I think as we can get. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Um, let me stay on the line because we can we can talk a little bit more. Um, so this one, I'm looking at one. See, the problem is the other thing you give up for eight hundred bucks is you only get six, eight gigs of RAM. You really need sixteen. Um, these have the Ryzen 5 in them, which is fine. Going to be enough processing power for you. Uh, maybe not an Aspire. Let me look at some of the other Acers. Acer is a, is a Taiwanese company that makes a such a broad variety of stuff. It's hard to know, uh -huh. um, you know what, what their best choices are. Uh, they have a green laptop. The Swift is very nice, but I think it's very expensive. Um, Looks like, boy, even Acer's stuff has gotten more expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, it's partly because of the you know the costs of uh, the chips these days and the chip shortages. Um, yeah. Yeah. Here's an Acer Aspire One. That's got a Celeron in it. It's about as slow as you can get. Uh, oh, that's yeah. three ninety nine. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go up to the Ryzen 3. Now we're talking 400 bucks. Yeah, I think you're going to look at an Acer Aspire is what you're going to look at okay. in that price range. And these aren't bad. Uh, I'd love you to go to a Best Buy or somewhere and try it before you buy it. Make sure you can live with it. 
Uh, oh, hey, that's a great idea. Yeah. I will do, I will yeah. do that. Yeah. They have an Acer Aspire 3 with an i5. It's 11th generation, not the latest. Eight gigs of RAM. You'd like to get 16 in there, but otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. and that's 500 bucks. So I think we're in the in the right ballpark with the Acer Aspire 5. Oh, 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 that's, yeah, that's the Aspire. And you said, is there a specific... Well, I would look at, in fact, you can do this on their website. Look at the Aspire 5 laptops, and those are about $500. Five. Yeah. I'm going to suggest you add uh, a little more memory, so it's going to be a little more expensive, but not a huge amount of memory. Okay, but that, yeah. that sounds doable. Oh, good. That sounds doable. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you so much, Leo. Love your show, and oh. I love listening to you talk uh offline <laughs> <laughs> i know that's the fun part of uh of being on hold and our podcast really of course is. we leave a lot of that offline conversation in so the podcast yeah, is another I way know. to, to it's, hear it's really fun. hear us chatter you're, you're a jolly sort <laughs> <laughs> well thank you i am i am glad to hear you say that i feel like lately i've been getting a little crabbier but uh, uh, tr oh, trying to keep my spirits yeah. up where is lake los angeles well, I told Professor Laura it's out where they dump the bodies. Oh, right. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, and now that the water level's going down, uh, you notice that, know. don't you? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. East, of, east of Lancaster, up above LA. I'm looking at a map now, and I see nice. Yeah. And you're up at you're up at 2,600 feet, so you've got that high altitude. Yeah, nice. yeah, the air's nice uh, except for the dust and. Uh, but no allergies. You know, thank heavens, no. That's but something we got to. I, I, my poor wife just is dying from allergies. She's decided to spend oh. the summer on Claritin. And, uh, oh, bad. yeah, bad. yeah, so good. We're going to look somewhere for somewhere like a desert like where the allergies aren't so bad. Yeah. 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 I'm not a really desert person. I'm more of a temperate forest person. So Me too. Quite an adjustment. Me point. too. I'm Are the you? same way. Yeah. I like the, I like oh, the ocean yeah. and I love the forests. Got it. Got to get those forest baths. Yeah. All right, Susan. Oh, thank you, Leo. A pleasure. Take care. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Yeah, it's Antelope Valley. I, I had never heard of Lake Los Angeles before. Same. A dry lake is what remains of a community founded on a real estate scam, according to <laughs> Atlas Obscura. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't have a train whistle. Woo, woo, I should. Should have a little train whistle. There used to be an advertiser uh, called Sleep Train, uh -huh. and they would give you a little wooden train whistle to blow at the end of every ad. <laughs> <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy, Micah Sargent, tech guy too. I'm giving Micah an inside look at, uh, at old-time radio. Mm -hmm. He said, I ought to have a train whistle. You know, you can buy those little wooden yep, that's the train whistles. And I was remarking that there was an advertiser in the Bay Area called Sleep Train. Get it? And at the end of every ad, they gave you a wooden train whistle that you were supposed to blow. You'd do the ad and then you'd go, whoo, whoo. <laughs> now we just have a button. <laughs> now it's just a button. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Those were the days. Practical we also, uh, you'd get the job and they'd issue you a cowbell. It was nice, you know. Oh. Yeah, a little uh, squeeze toy. Uh, you know, it's, but times have changed. DJs don't quite do as many of those sound effects as we used to. 8888 Ask Leo. Dick D. Bartolo will not be here uh, in a little bit. He is, what is he doing? He's gone somewhere. He's He is playing with gadgets and gizmos. Oh, he's at I an event. He, he's sure doing he's, something. He's doing something. Uh, but he will be here with us tomorrow. So, uh, so, uh, so there you won't you go. be buying any gadgets yep. today, but yep. maybe tomorrow. Yep. Hopping on the soul train right now. KG, Kansas, sorry, Canyon City, Colorado. Hey, KJ. Hello. Welcome. I, uh, thank you very much. I just I'm getting mixed results online when I'm looking. Can you set up a Apple Watch with an Android phone? You cannot. No way you to cannot. do that. No. You uh, can set up an Android Wear watch with an iPhone, but Apple doesn't like you to use anything but an iPhone. In fact, there are smoking gun emails 
that have been revealed in a court case from Apple executives like Craig Federighi and Eddie Q saying, we can't allow people to use Android phones. <laughs> If they if they if they could use inexpensive Android phones, they'd give them to their kids, and we'd lose a whole generation. So they are very focused on uh, absolutely not on um, on not letting you use Android. If you are living in the Apple world, La Vida Apple, you got to do it all the way. I I, I think that's wrong. Yeah, uh, it's monopolistic behavior. But. Uh, uh, I'm Team Android. I like Google phones, but I, so I guess I'll just have to see what the Google Watch is when it comes out. I just I like the design on the Apple better and the features, but we'll see. Yeah, I think Apple has a little bit of an edge, uh, certainly in a sales edge on the Apple Watch. But the Pixel Watch, which is coming out this fall, looks. I think it looks beautiful. It's round which I think watches should be round. <laughs> Apple doesn't think so because they say that wastes space because uh, screens are square. And so if you have a round screen, you have to cut off the corners. Um, I, I think you should also probably look at a couple of other kinds of uh, Android compatible watches. The Samsung Galaxy watches are fantastic. The Galaxy Watch 4, I think, is very, very good and does much of what the Apple Watch will do with any Android phone. Uh, so I would certainly take a look at that. Um, you can answer phone uh, answer calls with it. No, no. I don't know of any watch besides the Apple Watch that you can answer calls. By the way, that's something Apple's changing with its next version of iOS. iOS 16 will let you place calls as well on your phone. So it's full Dick Tracy. Uh, yeah, if that's what you want. Uh, well, just, I mean, it's something I can live without. I just think it's a nice. It's, you know what? I have to say, at first I would have laughed, but a, a number of times I have literally answered uh, because I didn't have the phone to hand. Somebody important was calling, and I'd say, "Well, I'm on my watch," and they say, "Well, I would never know. You sound fine." So right. you, you really can't have a phone conversation on the watch. The Galaxy Watch Four Fossil uh, makes a lot of Android Wear watches. Uh, I think they're inexpensive and fairly good. I do agree with you, though. Uh, we got to see what Pix Google does with the Pixel Watch. That that's going to be probably king of the hill when it comes out. Mm -hmm. A Amazon watches yeah. are about 180 bucks, which is nice. Right. That's that's about that's half what a comparable Apple Watch would cost. Okay, would, uh, I think I'll sorry. just wait. Sorry to be the bearer of ba bearer of bad tidings. <laughs> I have a fit. I mean, a Fitbit one that I wear. Well, those are fine. I wanted to upgrade. Yeah. I wanted to upgrade. Well, now this is a good news because, as you know, Google bought Fitbit, and I expect to see much of what's in Fitbit uh, in Pixel Watch. So, uh, okay. that for at least for that much, heart rate monitoring, fitness monitoring, it's going to be a good, uh, I think, a very good watch. Okay, well, it'll be worth the wait. Thank you very much. You're I really welcome. enjoy your show. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it, KJ. Um, I I think uh, we're a couple of generations out from the Apple Watch being completely its own. Because we just they're got, moving that way, yeah, aren't they? We just yeah. got a firmware update uh, recently. We just got a firmware update recently uh, within the last couple of watchOS versions that allows you to do a restore of the Apple Watch without having to send it in. Because uh, right now you have to have a phone, set it up with a phone. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if you had cellular in this thing, mm -hmm. uh, and you could make as well as take phone calls, yeah, then it could be its own. Why do you need entirely. a phone? Exactly. Why do you need a phone? I mean, I think the bigger screen, it's hard to do a lot of things. You know, you can't yeah. send text messages very well on the watch. Although I record audio and send it, and that works. Yeah. You can dictate, that works. I mean, just as, because of the, the health tracking features, just being able to set this up on its own without needing it to be tied to an iPhone would be nice. And I yeah. understand why people want that. So yeah. I'm hopeful that uh, we're right around the corner from that. The good news about the Apple Watch is it's finally a decent watch. <laughs> for a long time, uh, it turned off the screen. Yes, yes. When you were looking at it, so you couldn't even get the time. But now it has an always-on screen, so you can at I least can just glance down. Always look at the time, which mm -hmm. I, that's a big improvement. Although it dims, it's dimming a little bit as as I look at it. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo the phone number. Bobby, Orange, California. You're next. Hi, Bobby. Hey, thanks so much for taking my call, Leo. Here's my situation. I um. My office is in Irvine, California, which is served by Cox Cable, and um, that was our provider before we moved. And uh, anyway, um, we had, you know, professional cabling guys and technicians, you know, set us all up. And um, 
uh, supposedly it's, you know, fiber optic or whatever. You know, the Internet has been very speedy. Then about two weeks ago, it started to come into a crawl. And uh, we finally had Cox out. And they monkeyed around for a while. And they go, well, you know, um, you've got plenty of um, bandwidth, you know, at the box. Um it's your cabling. You know, I've got like 30 foot of cabling, to, you know, to my desktop. And I'm thinking that doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, but it's a good out for them because they're not responsible for inside wiring. They're only responsible for getting you good connectivity to that box in the wall. The thing to look at is the big problem. Of course, you can have bad cables, but is splitters. Uh, is it one line coming directly from the wall? So I guess, and I don't know the technology, but there's like five, yeah, five desktops, and yeah. each one has their own run. Yeah, to the okay. So you have a router next to the connection uh, that's coming in from Cox. They probably they gave you a yeah. cable modem. A uh, couple of things to look at. Uh, Cox should look at this. Did they give you a cable modem, or did you buy your own? I'm sure they furnished it. Yeah. So then presumably they're responsible for it, and they would have looked at what is coming out of that cable modem. Cable modems, especially when you rent them from the cable company, are often old, out of date, poorly maintained. Uh -huh. You know, it's somebody, it's a used cable modem somebody else had before you. So especially because you have business service. Did you get business class service? Yeah. Um, I mean... I can't believe how much we pay. <laughs> then you got business class, <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you know. There's the confirmation. Yeah. Unbelievably expensive yeah. for our business. Well, they ought to be uh, doing a better job then, uh, frankly. Uh, and I think what you should do is threaten them. You, The good news is in Irvine, you have many choices. Cox is not the only place to go for business internet. So uh, I yeah. would say, guys, you gotta, you got to fix this. So when they tested it, did they test it outside or inside? Um, I wasn't there. Okay. Um, what you want them to do is come inside and test what's coming out of that cable modem because they are responsible all the way up to that cable modem. Now, if they say, no, that's full speed, then you've got to look at what else is going on. we got to take a break. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just had a break, but I don't have to give you up. Still talk. Yeah, so you, 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 you're in a situation where, you know, do you have an IT uh, helper? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he can, he can come in. Uh, in fact, this is what I would do. He can come in with a laptop, hook it up. Uh, so there's going to be, here's going to be what the chain is. There's, some, there's fiber going into the wall. Coming out of the wall, there is going to be a box that converts probably at, at it depends this may or may not be inside your facility somewhere there's a box that converts the fiber optic into coaxial internet that's going to go into a cable modem that's going to convert it into ethernet and then that's going to go into a router sometimes they give you a modem and a router if they gave you a modem and router they are responsible mm -hmm. for that the ethernet coming out of that giving you what you pay for is it a gigabit I think, I don't think we pay, I think we just, I think we have unlimited use. I don't think we pay. Yeah, no, no, but the speed, do you know what the speed is that they promised? Okay, well, they promise everything, but, you know, I did one of those speed tests, and it was like under 100 upload and download. Yeah, that's, well, it depends what they offer. Now, remember, they sell a variety of speeds. We have 10 gigabits coming from our provider. Much more common in a business is 1 gigabit. 100 megabits is one-tenth of that. That's probably not enough for an office of five people uh so you have to ha your it guy has to come in and test it coming out of the modem out of the router uh, and and see where the fall down goes if they're saying no going into the modem coming out of the modem that's where they're responsible to is the point where it comes out of the modem uh is is the speed we promised then there's somewhere else that's being degraded and there's a lot of places that could be. They're they're washing yeah, their yeah, hands. Yeah. They're saying, "Well, it's not our problem. You got to get your wiring right." So somebody has to come in and test it each step of the way to see what where does it fall off. Typically, what happens is poor cabling, splitters can be really bad. Doesn't sound like you have those. Sounds like you've got a router with five Ethernet ports on it, and each one a direct run to each computer. Is that correct? 
Yeah. Yeah. So then the ch the thing to do is make sure that that router is working properly. Did, uh, are the Ethernet? Do you know if the Ethernet cables are coming out of something Cox provided? They're responsible for all the way up to where you put your gear on. Yeah, I'm not positive. I know that when we moved in, there was like a phone wall with all this. Right. You know, I know we use some of it, replace some of it. I'm not sure. See, that's I can't answer that. So they may well be responsible for it. They're going to say we're not responsible for any of the wiring inside the office. That's you. You installed that. But but they are responsible for getting you full speed right up to that point. So the first job is to get your IT guy to figure out where is it, where is it getting slowed down. And if it's inside the Cox loop, they can say all they want. you got to say, no, 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 look here. It's not coming out of the router at full speed. And then they have to fix it. Chances are they gave you a crappy cable modem. <laughs> I'm, honestly, that's probably, and that's their fault, and they need to upgrade that. Or you can get your own. You can tell your IT guy, let's replace. He he needs somebody with who knows what he's doing, and I hope it's your, your IT guy can go in there and just bit by bit test every uh, a, a bit along yeah, the chain. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? And I think we'll just. Yeah, I'd rather just do it myself. I can't depend on these. I'd rather just fix well, it. Well, Cox is notoriously terrible, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing to do. And something we do all the time is see what other choices you have. We have three different Internet providers for redundancy. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you you can pit them one against the other because <laughs> mm -hmm. they're all in competition. <laughs> That's the nice thing about spending as much as you're spending on business class Internet. All right, got to go. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the remote work song. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Beach Boys knew <laughs> that they were writing a song for hybrid work. Ooh, baby. 8888, ask Leo. Normally, Dick D. Bartolo will be here. But again, as I mentioned, he's going to be here tomorrow on the tomorrow. next show. Because he's doing something. I don't know what. Tomorrow. Let's go to, uh, what do you want? Do you want to go to Corona? Let's go to Corona. All right. Let's go to Corona. We got John on the line. Hi, John. Hey, Leo. How are you doing today? I am great. By the way, the Beach Boys are coming to the Ventura County Fair this August. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! What can I do for you, John? <laughs> can you hear me? I hear you. Are you in your truck? No. Well, I'm in my car driving. Um, anyways... Quick question for you. I have, it's like a two-part question, kind of. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old M-Series 65-inch Vizio TV. Okay. And then just this past year, I went out and bought an M-Series soundbar. Okay. really like the soundbar. Yeah, Vizio. We actually have tested a lot of Vizio soundbars. They're very good. A lot of bang for your buck. Now, one thing I find... Um, and I only find it when we're streaming on Hulu. Is when your when your show you're watching goes to commercial, the commercials will blast you out of the room. <laughs> so you have to turn around. Like when you anticipate the commercial coming, you either have to hit mute or down down volume, you know, three four times, or else it's you know. And my wife got to the point. She's like, "Get this thing out of the bedroom. I can't deal with it." <laughs> A lot of, you know, this is a perennial complaint. The FCC has rules that commercials cannot be uh, louder than the programming, but there is all sorts of ways uh, uh, you commercials can make it appear to be louder with compression and things. So sometimes, even though it's the same decibel level, it is, to your ear, much louder. So sometimes it's that problem. I should also point out, Hulu, I don't think, has the same... Yeah, the rules don't apply rules. to uh, a streaming. streaming service, so that's why they get to make them so loud. Is it really the case that a streaming service yeah. can turn up ads? Radio commercials or commercials on the internet are not affected by the Call Mac. That's what it's Radio called. Radio commercials are not? That's what it says. Hey, Jeremiah, <laughs> turn up the commercials next time, okay? we got to drive uh, John crazy. So that's really yeah. frustrating. So um, there are... Your Vizio may even have this. Some TVs have... 
uh, a setting in the set, an advanced sound settings that will moderate that a little bit. So you might look. I don't know offhand if the M series, the M series is Vizios is a good, you know, the top, not quite top of the line, but almost top of the line Vizios. They're very, very good. They may have a setting, or the sound bars may, that will fix that. If they don't, there are even boxes you can buy that will do that. Um, somebody's telling me in the chat room, Asthmatic says, uh, Hulu is notorious for loud commercials. Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Uh, try, maybe you'll find out. Yeah, oh, I listen, I watch Hulu a lot. In fact, can I recommend The Old Man? What a great show that is. Not for the kiddies, but, uh... I think the wife and I are starting out this week. Oh, I, I... I, I'm going to predict you're going to love it. I, I, I'm i sitting here with my wife, Lisa, and we're going, I'm saying, this is, I can't, this is so good. <laughs> well, then watch Banner Under Heaven. Oh, we did. Oh, my oh, God. Oh. We can't stop talking about oh. that. Oh, that was a heavy-duty uh, one. The, the, the uh, yeah. LDS does not like that show at all. Uh, oh, no, we can only watch one episode a night or else my wife wouldn't be able to sleep. Yeah. Oh, is that creepy? I think you'll like the old man if you liked uh, Banner Under Heaven. Yeah, Hulu is, you know, Hulu's interesting. They're doing some of the, they used to be kind of the throwaways where the networks would put their junkie shows. And it's turning out they're doing a lot of originals that I think are quite good. Yes, yes. Uh, one other, just my other quick question, the main reason I call. Potentially going to be looking for a new TV um, for my bedroom and then I would move that M series downstairs possibly. Um, do you know of any TVs that natively have Bluetooth out that I could connect, let's say, my ear, my AirPods to right. or just a set of both? Yeah, quite a few do. Bluetooth. Quite a few do. Really? I think my, probably most of the new ones do. The only thing you should be aware of is due to the nature of Bluetooth, sometimes that will add some uh, lag. So vocals will uh, seem not to be synced with the movement of the lips. But uh, I think a good TV is going to take care of that by allowing you to adjust somewhat. Uh, here's an article from uh, CBR.com. Why Hulu commercials are so loud <laughs> and how to fix it. Um, it's... I'll put a link in the show notes. I don't know I don't know how to fix it, but it seems like some ads on Hulu will start off maintaining the volume of whatever show the viewer's been watching before slowly but surely blaring on all cylinders. Hulu is supposedly working on a solution. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah sure they are. Right. Uh Okay. Apparently now they're saying that the calm does so, given that streaming platforms like Hulu could all be considered the same channel, theoretically, theoretically, Calm might uh, impact This whole that. article is just a bunch of speculation. I'm reading through oh, their suggestions right. on Never what to mind. do, and it's not good. Timothy Donahue, stop speculating. They even say, you could contact the FCC, but it's probably not going to do anything. Well, well let's that's not, not a way to fix yeah. it. I always get yeah, this, this link bait Looking articles. for something immediate, but yeah. you know, that's right. Then part of me thought... You know, after the wife falls asleep, and I, if I want to watch something more action oriented, then uh, <laughs> get headphones. Dateline yeah, get I can, headphones. I can put my there are, headset on. There and, are, and, and I would recommend it instead of Bluetooth. There are a number of companies. Uh, Sennheiser's one that make wireless headphones designed for TVs, and those are not using Bluetooth. They're using RF, uh, and they're and they're they don't have the lag problem. So okay, but then. So let me ask that question because I used to have a, a set of Sony headphones that would whatever, but how, you would have to get up and I don't want to have to get out of the bed to be like, okay, now no, no. I want to listen to my headphones. They're wireless. I want to be able to. No, they're wireless. <laughs> That's the key. So they're how, wireless. How do you connect it? So there's a how box connect connected to the TV that is a transmitter. And of course, you're going to keep your headphones over there because they're charging. But then you pick up the headphones, bring them to bed with you, and whenever you want to use them, you put it on. There's also, and maybe this is a better choice, Roku makes a Roku uh, with a remote that has a little headphone jack on it. And whenever you want to listen, you just plug it into the Roku uh, remote, and now you're listening. I use that a lot. Yep, same. It's a good solution. Now, if, But like on the Sennheisers, if you, how does it know to turn the audio off on the TV and just only go through the headset? Magic. No, you use a TV remote to do that. 
Okay. Uh, but try take a look at these Rokus. And by the way, there is one solution. It's a solution I've chosen. I pay for ad-free Hulu. Five bucks a month, yeah, buddy. Well, I, I, did the, I did the Hulu thing where it was like like $20, and you got to hear how they run like a special every once in a while. Like I, I got like a special, so, but I mean, I guess I could upgrade to the ad-free. Uh, you're worth it. I'll tell you what, yeah. takes about uh, 15 minutes out of every show. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you can get through Banner of so Heaven short. like this. It's 44 <laughs> minutes long uh, without the ads. You, you got a point there. Well, I appreciate you. My pleasure. Oh, and we lost John. His Bluetooth just went out. Yeah. That's another reason not to use Bluetooth on your TV. I, I, just, I didn't know that there were those RF options. Those yeah, cool. those Sennheisers are great. Uh, I got those for my mom. Because, you know, 88, little deef. Uh, I, I only noticed when I came in and I could... I, mom, <laughs> can you turn down the TV? Uh, so those are those are great wireless uh We'll put a link. You found them. Yeah. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes to uh, those. They're not uh, cheap, but they're not horribly expensive. And there is an article that uh, As The Medic found uh, from Hulu on uh, why their ads are so loud. Uh, apparently, they want to fix it. This is from Hulu support. Ads too loud? Because it's. I guess it's not in their control. The ads are inserted by others, you know, the network. So you can actually let Hulu support know. It ain't working. Micah, let's do another hour. Okay. Whew. Oh, the right. radio stations won't let us. But we'll be back next time. Thank you for joining us, Leo and Micah, your tech guys. Have a great Geek Week. Goodbye. Let's do another hour. Well, that's it for the Tech Guys show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.